What's up, viewers and listeners? My name is Jay. I'm a registered nutritionist based here in Bristol, working with BJJ enthusiasts across the globe, helping jiu-jitsu practitioners perform to their best ability on the mat, whilst making sure they are not doing anything stupid with their weight cuts. On today's episode, we had David Weston. Dave is the Northern Submission Series Under 100 Kilogram Champion, the Chaos Fighting Championship Under 100 Kilogram Champion, Grapple First Veteran, British Champion, and probably some other champion from another federation somewhere. This guy is a legend of the Jits world and one really down to earth guy. He is the co owner of Black Country Jiu Jitsu School and he was kind enough to let me come up to the club, have a role with some of his members, including some of his, his staff and himself and sit down afterwards for a podcast with me. We cracked open a couple of cans of ultra cold monster and we got down and dirty and talked about some jujitsu beef between up and coming athletes, big guys not utilizing bottom game enough, belt promotions and how they should be done and not done, intentional weight gain, becoming a no-gi coach and competitor and much, much more. Thank you for tuning in. And of course, if you're not subscribed, please click that button and turn on post notifications for further content updates. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening. Let's get into episode 25. Oos. <laughs> Right, guys, episode 25. My name is Jay. I'm the host of the BJJ Nutrition uh, Podcast and the BJJ Nutrition Consultancy, where we help all athletes uh, perform to their best and obviously not do anything silly with their weight cuts. Today, I am joined by the infamous... Dave Weston. Dave Weston. Mate, thanks for obviously coming on board. Um, obviously, had a good chance to chat you at Victory International, um, and obviously, you've, you've fought a few of our guys that we've worked with before as well. I know it wasn't the outcome we wanted and everything like that, but um, yeah, it's good to get you on here, and obviously, we've worked with a couple of your students down here as well, which is pretty cool to see. So um, yeah, now you've had the uh, call up to get back onto Grapple Fest again, I yeah. thought, well, better chance to obviously come and speak to you in person, and also have a quick roll on the open mat as well, which was pretty That's cool. It. So yeah, uh, mate, yeah. thanks for having me down. No, pleasure um, Right, dude, for those who don't know who you are, do you want to give a kind of like background as to sort of lineage, where it's all started, that type um, of jazz? or Yeah, so uh, I started started off under Neil Simkin in Warsaw, which was originally was Simkin Martial Arts. Okay. Uh, eventually turned into Gracie Barra WS1, which I believe now is WS2, <coughs> under somebody else. Started off with him, uh, trained there, got my blue belt there, probably about two, two and a half years in. Did most of my training under Carl Holmes, who so I believe is a black belt now. Two and a half now. years at white belt, was it? Or um, just over two, I think. I, did, I think I did MMA with him for about six months before that, and then it's probably just around just after the two year mark. Okay, okay. Uh, got sense. my blue belt. Quite sporadically trained, probably, you know, doing five days a week, two weeks a month, <laughs> 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 two weeks off, <laughs> so, all or nothing kind of deal. Basically killed yourself and then was like, right, I'll yeah. come back. <laughs> but at the time, I was uh, I was training a lot in the day classes uh, under Carl Holmes, who was a bit of a legend. I think he was a purple belt when I started, probably brown belt when I left. Um, he was a really good coach, actually, uh, at the time. Um, so trained there. Um, ended up changing jobs, so I ended up going... Uh, I left there, I did a stint at Gracie Barra Birmingham for a bit, again, on and off. Mm. Um, struggling to get around my job, a bit of an excuse more than anything, but yeah, so I, I had about two years away, I'd imagine. Two years where I was, uh, again, just sporadically training, and then moved to Gracie Barra Halzo in when that opened. Uh, trained there for, for quite a few years, got my purple belt there, um, up until about four years ago when... We left, started our own club, yeah, and I've had my brown and black belt from Ben Popperton here ever since. Nice, yeah. okay. If you don't mind me asking, obviously you mentioned that it was a bit of a struggle getting sessions around your job and stuff. I'm sure yeah. there's been loads of fucking listeners who are thinking exactly the same thing. For example, yeah. was it what was the sort of clicking moment other than having your own club type thing? Was there any way that you kind of found a way to work around that at all? Or um, God's honest truth, I think you can. You, I could have done it, but it's. Yeah. I started a new job, it was a lot of hours, traveling, it was doing maintenance uh, on like building sites right. um, all over the country, so the hours were a lot. I probably could have squeezed it in if I tried harder, but it's, it's again, I'm quite all or nothing, so if I'm not all in, I'm kind of all out, and it's, I got into that mindset, and it wasn't until eventually I was like, I went all back all in, I'm all in, I'll train seven days a week, that's fine. Mm. If I'm not training seven days a week, I'm probably training 
three or four months. You know what I mean? Okay. So he's one of that. He's more mindset. I could have done it if I if I'd really tried. I could have done it. That's. I think most people probably know that the people yeah. who are like all oh, struggling to make training. You're like, well, you could. You just choosing not to. A little bit tired, or you know, <laughs> yeah, you are choosing not to. Yeah. So it's, that's fair. So I'm guessing that's now training. Obviously changed. Now you've got this pace. Obviously. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it changed when I switched to Greater Barrow Hills. I mean, I switched to doing five days a week, and at the time, <clears throat> I was. I was getting up at half four, I think I'd leave the house at five and I'd get to the gym at six. So I'd mm-hmm. work a 13 hour day, get to the gym, I'd sleep outside the gym in the van for half an hour and then I'd train <laughs> until 11. We'd train right up until 11 o'clock and then I'd uh, go home and sleep for about four hours and do it all again the next day, every day. I'd do that five days a week and then I would, I'd normally sleep for about 14 hours the Friday night. I'd train the Friday night, go home, sleep 14 hours, get up, do open mat Saturday, do open mat Sunday and do it all again. Wow, yeah. and was that because you were com- a competitive sort of jiu-jitsu guy at the time and trying to get the rounds in, or were you just that like in love with the sport? It's, again, it's, uh, no, I was just, just doing it for the sake of it. It was fun. Uh, and I'm quite like, <laughs> I struggled to be like, oh, this is going to suck tomorrow. I'd be like, ah, fuck it, I'll stay late and spar. <laughs> Sparring ends, I'd be like, fuck it, I'll carry on, I'll do some more fucking rounds. <laughs> it's, uh, it was more stupidity than anything. I didn't, I've always loved competing, but I was never like, I want to be a high-level competitor. I was doing it for the crack, really. Yeah. Um, so it was never like a, there was never an aim. I don't think it was just, just banging your head against the wall for the fun of it, really. <laughs> Obviously, it comes good. It makes you laugh because you sat in like, like you've got a gym now and like the competitions that I'm doing now. I'm grateful for all that work I did, but I didn't do it on purpose. It was just like I was just like, fuck, I, I really enjoy this. So I'm just going to keep doing it and do it as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, it was just accidental more than just anything. Accidental. Yeah. Just don't want any more sleep. I just want to train a bit more, basically. <laughs> yeah. Just, when you get into the mode of four hours sleep every night, you kind of just get used to it. You're walking zombie, but you don't know any better. So it's like well this is just life now you can put the spin on it can't you and be like oh Andrew Tate S and be like yeah, I get up at yeah, the crack yeah. of dawn and I do my I get up at four <laughs> o'clock to the, <laughs> to hustling away <laughs> grinding away well we'd go up at half four and be like fuck why did I do that again last night and then it would get to like ten o'clock at night I'd be like yeah I'll stay and do some extra hours <laughs> next morning fuck why did I do that again yeah, last night I, just I, relentless for no I, reason I've got this ongoing joke with a few people that my sleep score on whoop is like a hundred percent like if I don't get like eight hours I'm like the most crankiest well, this, fucking person obviously in the world. Uh, when Covid happened I was I was doing that job right up until Covid and then yeah. they laid us all off towards Covid time and that's when I came away from it and I went from that to sleeping eight ten hours a night <laughs> and honestly my hair got thicker my, 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 my skin had a different colour to it I was like fuck I was like, I'm like, never doing that again yeah, like, like, like a lizard yeah, or something like this yeah. like, and then, work start calling you back up and they're like oh uh, we need you to come back into work I'm like I'm not doing that ever again man. Fuck, fuck that that was terrible Jesus Christ <laughs> Yeah. Basically gained some superpowers over COVID, hey? I love that. Yeah, man. This was funny. Uh, had some rest. That is. Um, if you don't want me asking, obviously quite intense. Obviously, it doesn't sound like there's much time to recover and stuff. W- what were things like injuries, skin infections, all that jazz, therapies? I don't know. <laughs> so, um, no skin infections ever from that. Uh, I've always been a little bit injured, but I feel like I've never had like huge major injuries. Right. I'm just forever t- a little bit injured. Niggles, you know what I mean? yeah. So I do get away with it. Like I'm forever like doing my knees in and stuff and it... Like, I'll, I'll have a tear on my LCL or something, but it's never, like, uh, like a full tear. Mm. You know what I mean? I think I have been lucky in reality. I've had a couple of shoulder dislocations. Ooh. Dislocated jaw. Uh, stuff like that, but never, like... Dislocated jaw? I can't be from jail, oh, God, that's a fucking good story, that well, one Well, come is. on, then. Let's hear it. What's going on here? Oh, is someone trying to twist your so, face off or something? No, so I'm sparring quite hard with Lawrence. You met him earlier. <laughs> one of my good yeah. training partners. Sandman. Yeah. man. <laughs> good fucking lad. Uh, sparring hard with him. And... Uh, one of the other lads in the gym comes flying over from his spine, heel kicks me in the jaw. Yeah, so it wasn't even anything to do with him. I think he was taken down or something. His fucking leg comes over. I'm playing fucking bottom guard and this fucking just smashes me in the jaw. And everybody's like, oh, fucking hell, you're right. I was like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, carry on. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man, I'm like, like, fuck off, go and spar. Like, stop, you know, crack on. Yeah. And then uh, I, was, I was lying there and I was playing like a Z-guard position like this. And I could feel my jaw was just like hanging. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't think I'm all right. <laughs> I don't think I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. So it was jiu-jitsu, but not really jiu-jitsu. It was like yeah. a spinning heel kick. Yeah. I bet, I bet you point out. I broke my, I dislocate my jaw from a spinning heel kick, and be like, "Whoa, yeah, what yeah. happened?" And like, yeah. you were never made Didn't see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. So not too many injuries. So dislocated shoulders again. I'm guessing from jits as well. Probably. Yeah. Just... So I did my first competition uh, three months into training. Nice. Back in the day, um, 
we're going back about 12 years now. Uh, in Hereford, the, the, the competitions, there was like barely any competitions out there. Everyone said that. Hereford yeah. was like, but it's now, that's now the Hereford Masters, Hereford was isn't the it? one. Yeah. Honestly, like, there's no competition as hard as the Hereford now because everybody was there. And uh, I used to fight at white belt lightweight back then. So I was six foot three, but I always fought 76 kilograms. Okay. Um, and the divisions were horrendous. I've had multiple times. I never actually medalled at Hereford, and like I went on like five, six win sprees and never took bronze. You know what I mean? Like these divisions were huge, man. Wow. Um, so my first competition, I remember thinking three months in, thinking, "Oh yeah, fancy competition now," and everybody's like, "Hereford's the place." So okay, sound. Um, but they, they they did them. I think they did like four a year. It's every three months or something. And I was like. Oh, I'll sign up for the next one. Then three months' time, three months in, six months in. Sounds like a good time to start. That's good. And the, the sign-ups hadn't started yet, but they did have... It was full. The competition was full, but you could sign up as a, like a replacement. Wow. I was like, oh, I can't sign up for the next one, but fuck it, I'll chuck my name down as a replacement. And then a couple of days later, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you can do Hereford in like a week's time. I was wow. like, fuck, I don't even know like, the rules. What? <laughs> yeah, went out there. Uh, I won my first match. I remember just it was just a shit storm of fucking crazy. No idea what happened. Stood up. I remember seeing it was five two on the scoreboard, and the ref raised my hand. I'm like, I literally no fucking play. That could have been two of us. Two. Yeah. There's that Simpson scene with the two monkeys on the ship, isn't it? And just like people going like, yes, go. It was just like, well, that can go either way. Yeah, won the first one. No idea how. No, I don't even know how I scored five points. Um, second match, I remember passing. Passing a guy's guard from the offset, seeing that I had three points, I just stalled the rest of the match. I was like, I'm up, I'm up. <laughs> just holding <laughs> on. God knows I didn't get fucking DQ'd. Just held this guy the whole time, won that. And then in the final, no, it wasn't the final, the third match, I uh, yeah, got caught in Americana and I just, I don't think I just, it just didn't tap. And it popped, I remember it popped, it popped out. <laughs> and then the guy carried on cranking it and we're looking at him like, so it's fucking out now isn't it and just like, <laughs> did the rest of the match from like bottom mount just like <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah God. so that's how I dislocated my shoulder you're trying to remember hard man fuck all sleep just letting your arm pop <laughs> like oh snap before tap all that time yeah. it was fucking young and dumb I think more than anything oh mate well, that's how we all got funny stories advice. when it comes to it um so obviously belt progression's obviously been pretty linear other than sort of like stopping and starting in places based on work and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Any more belts that have been more successful? Obviously the common one that comes up is like blue belt blues and that type of jazz type of thing. Have mm. you had any, any hiatuses outside of that, as you mentioned, like work? Nah, so I, was, I was always pretty shit at white and blue belt, to be fair. Um, competed a lot. There was always big divisions, obviously, but uh, didn't... I won gold here and there, but never went on a spree of like winning gold, all the gold, time. Like gold. I win gold and fucked it, got a bronze and then, you know, silver and then get a gold again. So it was never like, never felt like at the top of the game. You just, it is what it is to turn up and see what you can do. I competed loads though, like regular. How come if you don't want me Again, it's kind of a split, I'd say, in the community of like, people think competing is great, right? And yeah. I'm sure you've got members here who just don't like competing, right? Yeah. And it's like, they're very, very good on the mats. You can even put them into the club and then you put that pressure on them and they just crumble all of a sudden yeah. type of thing. So yeah, yeah. what swayed you to the competing side of things more so than anything else? Is it... Um, I don't know. I think it was just the adrenaline rush more than anything. Yeah. It's like, just competitive yeah. nature maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I think it was a chance. It's, it's almost for the glory, isn't it? There's a chance that I get to pull this off. It was never really to win. It was like I want to be able to do this technique in a, you know, while somebody's watching or something. And oh, so for, like, that, show, for that show glorious you moment, or, yeah, yeah, rather than actually, I mean, you want to win, but it was more like, fuck, I'd love to hit this at competition. I'd love to, you know, you just keep competing, rolling the dice, but one of the days, I'll hit a flying triangle. <laughs> <laughs> one of the days. I love that, mate. Um, so, out of interest then, from a coaching perspective, and obviously where you've got your own facility here and stuff, mm -hmm. if you did have someone who just didn't want to compete in the slightest bit, yeah. and... Do you think that's a negative side of things to no. it all? Or... No, that's cool. No, I'm all for it. That's fine. Not everybody does. And it is, it's hard work. It's a bit up and down. It's, um, I get it. Yeah, if you've got like a, you got a job, you don't want to, f you know. It's, some people come here, just have a crack, let us and Steve and go home. And that's yeah. cool. Um, it's, it's a lot of hard work in it, really. A lot of stress. Would you still say to them to still try and compete once just to see what it's like? Or? Yeah, I would. But if they say no, so yeah, yeah I get it. Well. Yeah, it's hard work. But it's, the the main issue you'll have is as a like competition based gym, everybody's held to quite a high standard, so promotions are held to a high standard. Mm. 
Um, and you don't have to compete to get promoted, obviously, because there's enough competitors in the gym you can compare. You kind of know where everybody is. It's like, yeah. I've watched these lads compete all around the country. I know where they are. You can compare him to them. So, But everybody's held to that standard, and a lot of the times hobbyists don't like to do that stint of having to get really good at a belt to get the next belt. They'd rather... Just train two out. times a week for yeah. a year and a half you're going to get it like they want it written down and say this is when you'll get your promotion yeah it's interesting because like you've got that whole argument and we brought this up a few times like time serve versus mm-hmm. like ability if that makes sense yeah. and it w- swings both ways right and the, and the argument I kind of say if you look at Cole right, right technically he got three belts in a year yeah right yeah. purple brown black yeah. right yes he's competing at a black belt standard obviously yeah. you proved that his last obviously OBJJF sort of appearance and stuff like that but at the same time, he hasn't then had time served at each belt, technically, yeah. right? And then it's just like, you can work both ways in the sense that sometimes, hey, people do do the time served and get the belt promotion, and their ability isn't up to scratch, but yeah, it's, 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 it's tricky, uh, do you know what I mean? I think most people look at time served the wrong way. Now, Colobart is like a, a an different, different yeah, animal, yeah, yeah. different animal, just fucking throw belts at him. Fucking, <laughs> get, get, you know, <laughs> poor fucking purple and brown belts having to compete against that fucker, just get him, get him out you, of their way. Did you ever see that reel, I think it was, of like my coach was at a competition, like giving me a white belt back, like out of man. This is a lot of people see time served and they think, uh, I've done two years, I need my belt. I see it as the opposite. I'll be like, you've got two years to get as good as you want. This, this guy could be a blue belt after a year, but he's earned the right then. The people who are winning white belt and blue belt competition should be the people that got that good that fast. They shouldn't be people who have been a blue belt for five years so they can win everything. It's like, let's say you've got two, I'd like to see a minimum of two years at white belt, blue belt, pretty much every belt, a minimum of two years. If you're blue belt standard one year in, congratulations, you've got now, you've got the, the chance to go out and win everything. And mm. you've earned that because you've got that good that fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then if, if you're not a blue belt standard at the end of that two years, you'll stay a white belt until you are a blue belt. There's literally no point in you having that belt if you're not good enough for it. Mm. Um, obviously, a lot of gyms seem to hand them out mainly to keep people interested. And they don't that that seems down. to be the sort of main connotation is more business then they've, oriented. They've but. got a spy in a room full of people who are going to kick the crap out of them. And it's like, how downhearted is that when an athletic white belt comes in, you'll win a blue belt. They're running you ragged. Like, you ain't going to want to train. No. So yeah. just stay a white belt. It's fine. It yeah. takes time. It's interesting. Like people are very desperate for obviously that belt promotion all the time. And, and again, probably a common question we ask a lot of the coaches are: if someone comes and asks you and say, "Ah, oh, why have I not got my blue belt yet?" type of thing, do you then yeah. set them back another six more months mentally, type of thing? Or? <laughs> I'd like to say no, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, stripes are the best one. Oh, I haven't been striped for a while. <laughs> you're not going to get striped for a fucking lot longer now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no, not. I mean, when they're good at. You know, there's always, but you you look at people and you're like, oh, he's almost good enough. I think he might be good enough. And then over the next two, three months, you convince yourself more and more. You watch them and eventually you're like, yeah, they're fucking good enough. Yeah. So even if they're pestering you, as much as they'll get the fucking piss ripped out of them bad. You fucking mentioned that. You're fucking done for. But, um, <laughs> you know, the, you, when you know, like, you just know. Yeah, it starts as a suspicion like, oh, he might be worth a purple belt, and then it will grow and grow and grow, and eventually, like, he needs his fucking purple belt. I don't think no, so, like, other than the asking side of things, because I think some people can be. We live in a society nowadays where we want instant gratification for everything, yeah. right, all the time. And I think, uh, again, from my personal experience, where again, I felt like I was ready for blue belt. I had a bit of a situation where I had to move gyms and all this type of stuff, and in the case, I had to kind of be regraded and start again, which was a bit frustrating. However, as you mentioned into that period of time, like, great, I've got now six more months, 12 more months to just enjoy this yeah. white belt even more and go and yeah. compete and all this jazz type of thing. Um, but you, you somewhat, I don't know, I personally have, have, have felt I had the feeling for it, but I didn't bring it up because I'm like, it's not down to me yeah. to decide regardless type of thing. No, it's not, yeah. And plaguing yourself with it isn't going to do you any fucking good. You know what I mean? It just makes bitter. It's just, what you want to do is just get your head down, crack on. And if you think you're worth it, prove it. Mm. It just you know, if you're a white belt and you think you're the dog's fucking bollocks, smash the blue belts every night. Your coach will notice. <laughs> like fucking, I smashing blue belts again. That's at the, that's when they'll go. Oh shit, maybe I need to give him his blue belt. Yeah, ask him for it. Or make him go. Fuck off. Fucking back in the line. Just take the stripes off their belt. And fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come here, you. Yeah. Just that's, start with... that's one belt. <laughs> you ask again, another one comes off. <laughs> yeah. well, I've got no more stripes. Exactly, white belt for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, out of all the belts, then, which one did you enjoy the most? Then you mentioned, obviously, you competed a lot through white and blue, and then what? You had a hiatus at purple type of thing, or what or did um, you again? Was it all pretty same? Uh, it's it's got to be black belt. It yeah. sounds stupid, but 
Uh, I've enjoyed them all, to be honest, but Brown was cool as well. But the, you progress, and I, th I feel like at the minute I've just hit this point where I get to compete against guys that I've been watching for fucking ages, and it's like it's it's cool as shit. It's like you get a message off Chris Thompson, the Adam Ellis one. Like, fuck, I've watched that guy fucking compete for years. Like, big fan of him. Chris Thompson's like, Adam Ellis Grapple Fest. You're like, holy shit, yes. <laughs> you know, like, that's the coolest thing on the fucking planet to me. Yeah. I'm still like, um, like at Victory, I was chatting to, you know, you're walking around the room chatting to Ash Amos, Ed Ingham. I was like, the Ed Ingham is like my fucking hero, man, that guy. He's a fucking legend. And, uh, you know, getting to talk to these lads and, and we, well, Ed's out of it now, but like I competed against Ash, Ash Amos and he's like, again, I've seen him on all the Polaris's, I've seen him co fucking compete all the time and they're like, holy shit, I get to compete against Ash Amos. That's the coolest shit on the planet to yeah. me. Like, fucking love that shit. That's yeah, wicked. I'm here for it. <laughs> Do you know, I like, like the idea of it a little bit, I don't know what it's called, and it's a film with it and I can't remember what it is, but it'll come back to me in a second, but there'll be someone listening who will be a big fan of you. <laughs> Fuck. They will get that message from Chris and it will be like, oh, yeah. do you want Dave Weston? And they'll, think, they'll, be yeah. like, <laughs> they'll be like, decline. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going out on my sword and top of the champion yeah. of the world. Like, yeah, I've um, got one good win in me and then I'm retiring. Fuck, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <Don't bastards. laughs> it's going to be like Khabib X. Uh, Khabib X. Yeah. My father won't let me compete anymore. <laughs> I'm not done. It's, it's my mum's fault. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck's sake. so Black Belt was the interesting one. There's the most fun one. That's interesting. I get that. Um, you touched on the fact, obviously, that you fought a lightweight, and again, not yeah. not to have, like have a shot face on there. I know I've just yeah. known you as fighting at like super heavy or yeah. ultra type of thing all yeah. the time. So, what was that intentional with the weight gain, or was, was that lifestyle, or what was so at the time uh, I was a little bit heavier than that would have been. But me and my brother started at the same time, and he was always around the eighty-two mark. I was a little bit lighter. Mm. Ben, when he's he's like six foot seven or something, I'm six foot three even back then. Um, so I always cut to the lightweight because like, oh, we don't want to be in the same division because, you know, it, it was just really fucking funny because neither of us ever got to the final of the same fucking competition <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Talking about it six months in, being like, yeah, what if we have to fight each other? Like, fuck, you've got to get to the final first, man. <laughs> Wouldn't fucking worry about it. <laughs> so I was cutting all this weight to get down to lightweight just to not meddle anyway. <laughs> did you? Did he make you do it or did you volunteer to do it? I think I volunteered. I mean, the guy's six foot seven. It's like, yeah, fucking I'll go down. <laughs> six foot seven I'll at take fucking 76 is something else, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it seems fucking funny now. It's like we could have been in the same division, never fought each other. So <laughs> it's a fucking stress for no reason. Yeah. Uh, but and you mentioned there was some intention of the weight gain. Then was that right in terms of like bring it? You, you're cutting yourself down obviously to that weight. And then when when did you start yeah. thinking like this? Go up a bit. Go up so during my uh, the time I had off during blue belt, I think I did all my competitions at seventy six at white belt, and then all my competitions um, at blue belt at ninety four. So during that time off that I had, wow, okay. <laughs> real chunky. Um, but I always, I, I always thought in my head, I was like, you want to, you want to be the biggest possible. Like, mm. cause if you want to, if you want to go out and win the absolutes and stuff, cutting down to seventy six is not the way you're gonna, you know, have the best chance of winning the fucking absolutes. Well, if you don't want me asking, do they have the split absolute back in the day? No, nah, no, nah, that was never. It was thing, just like yeah. pure yeah. absolute. Yeah, then bullshit, they yeah. normally do like, oh, if you can get under seventy seven, <laughs> like you go in the lower category. Yeah, I'm like, no, well, that's, that's not cack, real. That is. <laughs> I, I don't like it it's the absolutes are the absolutes for a reason I don't like the paid entrance either. either it should be it always was if you medal you can do the absolutes that's if you don't medal problem. you're not in the absolutes so, so it's the best of the best, best. go yeah. and fight each other that's what it should be um, but these days it's it's just an extra bit of money for another right, it's another conversation this, day, but yeah. I'm fed up personally and again a lot of other people who just there's a competition every single weekend now yeah. and it's just it's, water, it's watering down the fact that as you mentioned, everyone went to Hereford, right? You yeah. had like 30 man deep top sort of brackets or plus oh, type mate, thing. Was, I've been in ones that were like 70 plus. Jesus. Uh, yeah, lightweight, white belt. The closest uh, thing you get to that now would be like a kid's entry or something like yeah, that. Fucking go to the West Coast trials to get that number of people. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, the thing is nowadays, like I struggle to get even like two people in my bracket. And again, both of them I probably know. And I'm like, I don't yeah. want to pay 70 quid yeah. just to fight a guy I can go and travel two hours to and I'm open that <coughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just fucking... Yeah. Pointless in the slightest bit, but anyway, complete tangent there. Um, so obviously we went weight gain, obviously up to there. Did your brother do exactly the same as well? Out of interest, or did he stay? No, he's, he, I think he's like high eighties these days, but he's only really put on five kg since. Yeah, um, not massive, but 
I don't know. I think slightly different builds, really. He's a lot lankier than I am. I think I've got, I've like got, the, being like, I've got the fat Being, like I said, six foot three, obviously, in that right bracket, people must have looked at you like, how the fuck has he got yeah. there? Like... <laughs> It worked well as well, to be honest, yeah, having that extra length. If you could play a flexible guard game with that length. Mm. Oh, you must be T-City, basically, trying the every gun coming yeah, along, yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was nice. It's, I think it's nice. The, the best way to compete, especially at those levels, is to have like a, a special ability or something, you know what I mean? Something that you do that's unusual to everybody else mm. and something that you can rely on. That, and then like being long and flexible is a nice thing to have. Yeah. You get a lot of people who are like short and stocky and they'll rely on there, just force driving forwards. Yeah. It's like the opposite end of the spectrum. I still rely on it to this day. Like I compete at under 100 most of the time and everybody I compete against is stronger than me, like every time. But it's, you know, that's not the be all and end all. In fact, no. it's, I think there's like a list of attributes that you can use, and strength's just one of them. I think a lot of people rely on it, but like flexibility, speed, all the rest of them are just as important. It's just, yeah. just the way you use it. I think strength mixed with technique is is the easiest way to to beat somebody. Mm. So you, you know, you know technically what you should be doing, and if you're strong enough to enforce it, you watch Gordon Ryan's matches. He's not doing anything ridiculous. He's got perfect technique with a fuckload of strength. And he's like, yeah, he's like, how'd you beat that? <laughs> we were joking us on the last podcast, actually, about how uh, the only way we can make it harder for Gordon is if we give him a dad bod, basically, now. <laughs> bod, make, yeah. make him, like, really un- unathletic, basically, and just yeah. see if he could still perform to that standard. He probably fucking would, like, <laughs> to a similar standard, because his technique's bang on, isn't it? So I just he'd be mother milk by him by some proper fat tits or, <laughs> or something like that. That'd be even worse. Yeah, yeah. Be <laughs> fucked, yeah. Proper drowning all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, that's interesting, then. So, with the weight gain, you mentioned that it was... Not say intentional in the sense, did you, did you obviously had your lifestyle and stuff and obviously things yeah. change and obviously put on weight, which is quite normal for most people. Yeah. Family, kids, job change, whatever it could be, lack of sleep or work jazz. Were you intentionally trying to put on a bit of weight at the same time or was it just all just happened? Nah. Like, right, I'm just dealing with this as it is. It like, was just training little to nothing. Yeah. And probably a worse diet because I wasn't training because I wasn't in it. So over those two years where I really just randomly trained here and there, it just probably went up to... Well, above what my natural weight should be, but I fucking, you know, flew straight up. Yeah. But then when I sat there, I was like, you know, I was, I, it didn't bother me that much because I was, I was still quite flexible, still quite fast. Okay. I was just chunkier. So again, all the time I've been competing at that weight, the majority of people I compete against, they're stronger than me, but it was fine because I'd just play a flexible guard against them. Yeah. And a lot of the time they're, they're not used to competing against that because it's the heavier weights and they're, yeah. they're you know, they're expecting yeah. to fucking just butt horns. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, so it, again, it's like having something different to everybody else. Surprise somebody on the day, they're like, fucking hell, I wasn't expecting this guy to be like this flexible. It's interesting you said that. I fell in love for one of my first moves, which you look at, again, I haven't got loads of highlight reels, but it's pulling single leg X from standing all yeah. the time, like Gordon does type of thing. Yeah. And it would throw off all the big guys because yeah. they're expecting me just to go yeah, like this and just hold yeah. and just stay there. And I used to go, all right, I'll try and do some wrestling. But if it was yeah. the case of it just wasn't getting any further, I was like, yeah. right, okay, fine, let's just pull it. And it threw them off every single time. However, the problem being then is that, I don't know, if I do a grab on industries, people wouldn't pick up on the fact, oh, he yeah. just pulls into single leg legs yeah, every yeah. single time. Yeah. But it was quite useful and I was able to get a few, a few quick sort of straight foot locks and that type of stuff, which yeah. was nice. But again, it was also had the sweep of capabilities and that type of thing. But yeah. in my head, it was the case of, I don't want to be like some, I, I should just simply say, I don't want to be some unathletic, just fat slob who just can't be bothered with their weight type of thing and try and compete. I wanted to be athletic. I wanted to be doing everything, not just be limited by what I can and can't do. Yeah, so that's what I've been trying to do. Uh, I've been like an avid guard player all the way up until, I well, still am, but <laughs> all the way up until Purple Belt, where I was like, fucking hell, okay, maybe I should learn everything now. <laughs> just play guard. <laughs> I can't do anything else. So I've been, oh, I've been doing the opposite. Like I've always used that, and I've been like, right, I need to learn how to fucking squash some people now. I've been working loads on it. Past couple of years, been able to wrestling, been able to put pressure on people like this and the other. And it's, it's nice now because you can start with somebody. You can wrestle. If God's, if God's like your your main point, you're like, okay, I feel comfortable there. You can wrestle, and if you get taken down, go back to your guard. Mm. If you if you're like, fuck this wrestling's going shit, pull guard. It's nice because you're like, because you're starting with your your, your second your, your secondary weapon. Mm. Like, fuck it, let's just sit down and fucking play my primer. That's interesting, especially again. Yeah. Obviously, I've always been uh, either heavy, super heavy, or mm-hmm. again, I touched the ultras the other day, but I think my scales are fucked. I realised that from <laughs> a weight cut yesterday. Like all the guys who had to do a weight cut, and all the guys stepped up and said, "I'm like two kg over. What the fuck's this?" And I'm like, "I think my scales are fucked because everyone, <laughs> all the other scales are much lighter." And I'm like, "I'm gonna check these type of things. I don't think I'm in the ultras, thank God." 
Um, again, I just don't want to come up against some like seven foot four, hundred and forty kilogram yeah. ex rugby player. That's the problem. Um, but my point being is that most people in the heavies would have thought that starting up with the wrestling and going obviously then then going to guard playing again, it definitely crossed my mind at some point. Do you think one way is more superior than the other? The fact that you were a guard player from start and then then learnt the top smushing type thing, or what to learn in general? Yeah, so like again, yeah. oh, there's going to be other heavyweights out there who were just starting and would think, yeah. which one should I go to? Should Especially I be? if you're a big guy, I think learning learning to play guard takes away a lot of your strength and stuff. So you have to learn how to technically move. Because a lot of the time you can rely, especially at first, you're just going to try as hard as you can with every spar. Because there's mm. nobody worse than you. So like when you first walk through the door, you're the worst Survival. guy in the fucking room. <laughs> so you're just going to try and use every bit of strength you can. And a lot of the time, instead of using technique, you're just trying to muscle something somewhere and not doing it right, which you can't do from guard as much, a little bit, but not as much. So if you're starting guard, you have to learn how to be technical. And then, at least then, if you progress on to learning top game, you'll learn your top game technically, not just be like, okay, fuck it, I'm just going to try and fucking muscle everything. Mm. I think it definitely benefits that way. And I find a lot of like a lot of my t- top attacks. I always call it like playing playing guard from side control. So like I like to set up a lot of triangles and stuff from the top. Uh, it's a lot of like traditional guard submissions, but setting them up from the top because it just sits, fits into where my game is more sure. so. Um, so I'd, I'd suggest to people to do it that way. Um, That's interesting. Would that be different? If you're only asking. So obviously, again, speaking to um, Jack earlier, saying about mm-hmm. how you've not done you, you've not you've only switched to no gi probably the last few years like more permanently yeah. should we yeah. say yeah. if you weren't more gi based to begin with do you think that would still be the same outcome or I don't know I don't know no gi wasn't what it was when we started to be fair it, it would have been like there would have been some gyms that really focused on it but a lot of like the Gracie Barry gyms where I started it would have been like once a week be like, oh, just really a class on yeah um, so it wasn't a lot of it about and competitions were similar. There wasn't a lot of a, a lot of competitions would just be gi. There would be no no gi in the competitions, and really? yeah, all the Herefords were just gi. I think they did some no gis towards the end. Uh, but yeah, a lot of it was all gi. So that was that was your main focus. Um, and it was only really when we came here, I did do bits of no gi, but I was still always competed in the gi. Then we came here, and obviously me and Tim, who uh, runs the gym with me, he he was like, right, I'll teach the gi classes. I was like. Fuck, okay, I'll teach Shinogi then, I suppose. <laughs> you got put into Nogi, yeah, you know what I mean? Better fucking learn some Nogi, I suppose. And that's literally why I got into it. You could have become catch wrestling all of a sudden. You could have said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to teach catch wrestling, now all of a sudden yeah. we'll see you at Snake Pit or something like that, completely yeah, yeah. out there. Oh, God, that's yeah. interesting. So, again, I appreciate, obviously, that was at that time. Do you think for the modern-day big guy, then, do you think that'd still be, even as if they wanted to be a no-gi player only, let's say, do you think still starting from bottom would be a better place to go with? Or Yeah, I think so. It'd be hard to convince them, because, again, when you come in, you're going to use everything you can just to win a just fucking round. Fight, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I think in the long run, you're going to be better off. Um, but at the same time, if a big guy's going to go to competition, he's going to play top, so... You know, when they get to the point of competition, they're going to want to sharpen up whatever they can do best, mm. which is probably going to be top. Yeah, it's a hard one, but it's definitely worth. Yeah, the bigger guys, especially if if there's a bigger guy sparring with a lighter guy in the gym, you should play bottom. Like fuck it, what's the point in proving you're stronger than I'm on top? Like, yeah. especially at the lower levels, it's like, uh, yeah, fuck it, pull guard and well, see how well you do. It's just kind of the same. Obviously, that whole analogy. I don't know if it's Danaher or Gordon talks about it about practicing new techniques on white belts first, then yeah. blue belts, and then purple yeah. belts and stuff like that. And so again, I kind of use for me as I kind of mentioned, I'm a big friendly giant. I don't want to hurt anyone, especially yeah. any of the people competing. At the end of the day, I can't replace them if that makes sense. But mm-hmm. like, I'm going off to worlds. So don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. And yeah. that, and to the point where. I don't want to fall onto someone like just trying to pass their guard, let's say, and like hit the wrong angle or something mm-hmm. like that type of thing. And last thing I want to do is hurt them. But it comes to lighter people, and they're like, "All right, fine. Well, what's the point in me trying to show that I can cross face them, right? And just smush them to get past them type thing? No yeah. one's gaining anything here other than them going, "Oh, it's a big guy. This is fucking boring." Do you yeah. know what I mean? But... That's it. Yeah. I, I mean, I spar. I do rounds with all the lads. That... <clears throat> we got a lad called Josh. I think he's like low sixty kilograms. Uh, purple belt, really technical guard, really flexible guy, <clears throat> super fun to roll with. But I roll with him, and you want to see it's like it's just a Baron Bowler off because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all I'm going to use this round is Baron Bowlers because I know that's what you're fucking good at, and he beats me to him all the fucking time. <laughs> but it's like, it, well, you know, I could sit on that guy, I could probably just sit on him and just, you know, ride the round out. But what's the point? Mm. Uh, whereas I, I'll pull guard against him and just be like, that's it. Let's, um, you know, 
either I'm going to take your back or you're going to take my back, which was bear and bowl the whole round. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great fun. And then in reality, that keeps me nimble, keeps me like nice and like it keeps my movement up. And, you know, I'm gaining something from that rather than just, yeah, cross face, underhook, smushing him into oblivion. I'm not going to gain nothing from that. No, and obviously there's a time and place for it, which obviously in a competitive environment, you need the yeah. points to win them fighting yeah. crack the fuck on. But We've got some fucking massive lads in the gym and they tell you what I try and do then. Body lock. <laughs> I'm fucking, I'm like, I'm going to body lock this shit. <laughs> you're, you're, you're Come here, bastard. big boy. Yeah, yeah. Let me go. <laughs> so you do the opposite. It's like, I'm going to try and outstrength this fucking massive bloke. <laughs> big daddy yeah. Dave, come and cuddle you properly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Um, sorry, a bit of a tangent. I did pre warn you about that was going to happen. Yeah, but with the weight gain then from there, was there a point where you got to with your weight and you kind of said, right, I'm now going to sit in the heavy bracket type of thing and you had to come back under? Or were you always under for it at all? Or Yeah, so, well, I settled into that like 94, the heavy weight, 94 in the gi, 91, no gi. Settled into that. And I was quite happy there, to be honest. I, I always knew I should have been lighter, but I was never really that fussed in cutting way to anything I thought fuck it I'm just going to stay here mm. um, so I did that for ages and then I was there right up until about um, first competition after Covid which was my first comp at Brown Belt because I got my Brown Belt during Covid suspiciously <laughs> <laughs> allegedly because no one was training <laughs> yeah yeah whilst we weren't training yeah um, so then after Covid when the competitions came back um, did my first comp fucking funny story actually um, did the it was the ADCC UK it came back it was quite a quiet one I think so it was a bit no one knew it was at the Arnold Classic though which was it was a big event there was loads of people there but the, the competition just seemed empty for some reason oh I remember that again are you guys yeah. uh, did did Tom win that no that was that's the one after this right, is going back yeah. the year before yeah, that yeah. so I <clears throat> I lost at Owen in the finals actually um yeah, it was, it was a fucking funny day. I remember that they released the uh, they released the times for the schedules. And yeah. I was like, and I was in here training because it was quite a bit later on. I was like, fuck it, a warm up oh, here. That would have been at the NEC, it's, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a forty five minute drive. I was like, yeah. warm up here, and they'll fuck off over there. Perfect. So I'm warming up here. We jump in the car a little bit early, like crack on over, and then the fucking the guy who runs the event starts messaging me. He's like, where the fuck are you? Like, what do you mean? He's like, all the times have been moved forwards, and it's like, <laughs> it's like the sat nav says like half an hour to get there, and it's like you're on in forty minutes. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're, so we're fucking ragging it there. Um, there's me and Tim. We we get into the expo, and we literally jog into the event, and there's fucking stands everywhere with all the like the free samples, mate. It was like fucking running a marathon. I was just fucking <laughs> like, like pre workout. Yeah, yeah, like, I love that. Yeah, yeah, I was just fucking chugging everything on the way. Through. I love that. Probably like four different yeah. pre workouts pre get mate, on yeah, the mat like buzzing off your tits. That's what I drink him all the time. By the time I was there, uh, turned up, run over, found the organizer. Like, yeah, I need to weigh in. He weighed me in. I think I was like 91, 91 and a half for the under ninety nine division. I like, yeah, I was like, I'm definitely making weight. Did that. <laughs> Got changed, run over to Brother Matt's, did about fucking five star jumps. Like, yep, you're on next. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, shit. <clears throat> and I know we had, uh, it was only four man division, and it was me, me, Owen, and two black belts in this division. Owen. And me and yeah. Owen Livesey. Okay. And we were either side of the bracket. So it was two black belts. Owen was brown, I was a brown belt. We were the, either side. I was like, fuck, okay. He's like, you're on. I was like, oh, okay. Ran out and uh, I think I subbed this black belt in about 10 seconds. I was running on, I submitted him. Came off, I was like, what the fuck's just happened? I was like, what the fuck else? What's just happened? And then uh, the guy who runs the event comes over and goes, oh, I'm so sorry, mate. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I've seen you go on. And he was like, I was like, yeah, I won. He was like, oh. I was like, I thought you just turned up and got battered in 10 seconds. I was like, so like no, I fucking won. Oh, oh God. Fuck. How did the, how did the yeah, final yeah. go? A quick word about one of our sponsors, Grappler's Soap. The team wanted to find, right, the best possible defense against skin infections, which normally we get from each other or off the mass. This, in turn, led Dan and the team into researching more about soaps and essential oils, which turns out has been used for thousands of years, actually, as a natural defense against infection during the plague. Slight twisted story here, but grave robbers in England knew of the power of essential oils and smothered themselves in it before exhuming and stealing corpses. Useless fact of the day for you there. But Dan and the team had tried several soaps before, but none of them just simply wowed them. So he started to make his own. 
months more research, trial and error led to finally this golden nugget, grappler soap, which you'll be pleased to know the recipe is CPR registered and approved by pharmacists. The use of a specific method to lock in the amazing natural smell, no cheap fragrances used here, which means the soap and use smell great and stand the best chance of staying healthy. Although the soap was developed for grapplers alike, it is now widely being used by non-grapplers. And Dan is always like, delighted to hear from customers about how it's cleared up dry and itchy skin or relieved eczema or just simply made you feel f awesome the smell alone has been a massive hit with men and women alike so enough waffle for now go and get yourself some now at www.mrbassets.com or go check out their instagram page for some very funny memes at grapplers so thank you guys uh well it's funny actually back then because uh, i i i knew i knew of owen's judo pedigree but he didn't really have anything going for him in the sub submission grappling or anything at that point All right um so i was he's a judo but to be honest with you some of these mma fighters some of these judo guys they're the easiest fights you can have because they're a little bit they're, well they're out of their fucking zone you know what i mean yeah, it's not like it's about. a different rule set and this is what i've been training my whole life and if you've been so sometimes i favor myself against those guys because it's like welcome to my world a little bit yeah that's not what I was thinking, but uh, uh, I was like, I wasn't too worried about it at all. We were both brown belts. I'm like, fuck it, it's, you know, it is what it is. So he beat his black belt then? Although, yeah, yeah, he beat his black belt, yeah. Cool. I can't remember how. Um, we had a back and forth. He was definitely dominant the whole time. But uh, I think he passed my guard a few times and I'd always get out of my guard, throw a submission attempt, and he'd pass off that submission attempt, get my guard back, throw a submission attempt, went back and forth a few times. And then uh, I remember him landing... A near side underhook and a cross face. So it was on the other side. I was like, fucking hell, what's he doing here? I was like, I'm going to fucking get his back. And I was like trying to work out for his back. Uh, as I was trying to come out for his back, he passed the... Obviously, you've seen him fucking keza people. It's the first time, I swear to God, it was the first time it, like I'd seen him keza somebody on social media. He fucking... He, he sits into this keza. And I remember thinking, you're fucking meathead. <laughs> what are you fucking doing? Like, probably, mate, like I'm quite a flexible guy, like in inverted guard and stuff. I was like, that ain't fucking hurting my neck. I was like, and I was still thinking, I'm going to get his fucking back here, I'm going to get his back. And then about fucking three or four seconds go past, so I'm like, fuck, I can't breathe. <laughs> I was like, I can't fucking breathe. And it starts to settle in, and like the panic, I was like, fuck. And I was like, fucking, I was trying to get out of it like mad, and I ended up tapping in the end, because I was just, it, it was, I felt completely comfortable in there, other than the fact that he completely shut my lungs down. And I must have been in it for like, fucking 10 12 seconds it was oh like it just God. slowly dawned on me i was like oh you idiot like, you can't fucking breathe <laughs> and fucking uh, i was like he let go he was like fucking he was like frothing at the mouth at this point he'd just be like squeezing my head off for like fucking 10 seconds jesus christ and then uh, i remember like it, it i didn't go out but it went dark and like stars i remember like that uh, you know mario uh, domasat yeah uh, yeah his face comes over he's like you're right <laughs> no <laughs> I've said this to a few guests, yeah. but I've had um I've been put to sleep three times in competitions or a bit stubborn and stuff like yeah. this. And every time the ref comes over, he goes, Oh, you went out. Oh, I didn't think I was winning from here, mate, so don't worry. <laughs> it's <laughs> so fucking I, I was trying to have a crack with Owen afterwards and he was just fucking stone face, fucking like uh couldn't get couldn't crack a smile, man. I was, I was having a laugh with him. I was like, man, you just fucking pulled my head off. Crack a fucking smile. <laughs> like takes his gold medal, he's like, it's fucking shit. So I was like, fucking hell. And uh -huh. uh it caught up with him later on. I had a war against uh, a lad that teaches at his gym, uh, gym, Dan Pinchbeck. Yeah. And that was fucking tragic and all. Uh, at submission, super fights must have been seven or eight. I can't remember which one. Uh, I had a match against him. I remember trying to jump guard. Fucked it completely. Like, winded myself. And this guy just got on top of me and just fucking ragged the shit out of me for like six <laughs> minutes. Like, just smashing me into oblivion. I did get... Uh, I got out eventually. And I think... Uh, I caught him with Eddie Gimmel's uh, bollock lock, the, the fucking... <laughs> got him with that. I'm sure I popped his ankle that way, which is like a toehold, just using your fucking balls. Popped his ankle one way, and then I swear, uh, something else happened later on. I set up a saddle entry and popped his ankle back the other fucking way, so he's probably sound by the end of it. Fucking weird, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> Broke his yeah, ankle and breathed. Really, really. uh, yeah, it was a real good match. We ended a draw anyway, because he went the distance, ended a draw. It was fucking one of the worst matches I've ever had in my life, mate. It was like having a fucking lorry on top of you, just fucking reversing over you and driving over you. It was fucking tragic. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, afterwards, I was having a good crack with him. I was having a good fucking laugh with him. Uh, uh, like, real sound guy. I think you realise, like, 
man, when that guy competes, he's like on, like it's yeah. different to him. He's like, you could sense it. Like even afterwards, I was trying to have a laugh with him and he was like still just like this fucking still competitor. Can't. Like it's still interesting. I, there's a guy at our gym at the moment and I still can't figure him out. He's a purple belt competitor, absolutely fucking awesome. Sometimes I come into the comic class, can actually chat to him, absolutely no problem. Yeah. Other times just completely switched on and yeah. I'm like, right, okay. And like I said, I'm like, big friendly giant mentality I don't want to hurt people in the slightest yeah. bit but don't know what it was and one of the sessions he just literally caught and I was like right you're doing this like more than what I'm expecting type of thing right yeah. now I was like right we're going fucking some type of thing and like yeah. that's it type of stuff but then again like trying to ch- and I, I can't figure out what it is I think it could be to do with him like competing at certain points yeah. I think he's competing this weekend where yeah. is it to might be locally, I'm not quite sure. Um, and I'm like, maybe you should just get himself in the mindset for it. But for me, I'm just like, I just want to have fun all the time. I'm not really fussed about it, type of thing. Yeah. But. So I try and force myself into like modes like that because I'm a bit too relaxed before. Yeah. Especially afterwards, it's, it's, it's fun. It is fun at the end of the day. I'm not really that bothered about being the best in the world like this and the other. Um, it's more just having the fucking crack. But then, yeah, you look at people like Owen and he's obviously had this like this wealth of competition throughout his years. You can see it on him when he's competing. You're like, fucking hell, that guy's on. Like, yeah. you're in trouble. You're in fucking big trouble. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see. Is he doing the catch wrestling stuff at Snake Pit or not? Oh, yeah, he's doing um, Josh Barnett, isn't he? He's got Josh Barnett. Oh, they've got a super fan, haven't they? Fucking hell. Oh, can't wait that's, for that. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a fucking watch. Yeah. That'll be fun. That'll yeah, be fun. Um, sorry, we gave him another fucking tangent. We were talking about weight and you sort of sitting around the 91 <laughs> mark all the time. Ah, yes. So that was what, it. what I was getting to was. After that, after, uh, no, I don't know, Owen wouldn't have been 99. I imagine he's a little bit heavier than me, but the fucking size of this guy. He's a fucking, you know, he's fucking probably about half my height, but three times the fucking wide. This guy is fucking massive. Um, I remember looking at that and being, and I was, I was thinking to myself, I was like, well, if I want to do under 99 ADCC brackets, you know, uh, for, it made sense to go under 99, under 97.5 OBJJF. Mm-hmm under 100 super fights. Yep. I was like, where I was sitting in this like 91, 92 kilogram didn't really make sense for everything. It was like, it's a bit awkward. Didn't really want to go under 90 for like super fights and stuff. So I was like, well, that's where I'll go. Fuck it. I'm, I'm just going to go on a war path to get up to that weight, maintain that weight and just try and get like, well, bigger and leaner at that weight. So I'll go there, stay there and just try and get bigger and leaner while I'm there. And I've done that ever since. That was about two two years ago now. Nice, okay, that's interesting. Mm. So was there, is it just after that competition, was just, you kind of made that decision then to say, right, this is where I'm going to sit now type thing? Yeah. Or? yeah, it was either go down or go up. And again, I've always had this mentality of if you want to win the absolutes and stuff, like going down is ne- probably never the best choice unless you're yeah. like way overweight. I'd probably be in the same dead horse anymore. Obviously, we want avid listeners and viewers type of thing, but we've done some research based on like local competitions. So you, you might know this or you might not. When you after the smooth comp events finish, it'll reg- it'll show the weight that people are weighing at. Yeah. And so we went through what's quite a few of the local competitions and found on average people weigh under the bracket by one point seven kilograms in total. Mm. And then you start adding all the math together of right. Majority of these people would starve themselves to get them there, get themselves there, right? And there's a few people who are just eating into the bracket, which is absolutely fine, mm-hmm. right? 1.7 under, as it is. Let's just, talk, let's just say round number 100, right? And you're floating at 95, and you're thinking, oh, maybe I can go down to the bracket below. When you start bringing these margins together and you eat up, for example, the difference is like two kilograms, yeah. right? You're not going to go to someone in the gym, like, how much do you weigh? You're two kilograms heavy? Oh, no, I'm not rolling with you. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You're just not going to give a fuck in the slightest bit. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Well, that's the other goal is I like the, I do like the mentality, it sounds fucking bullshit, but the mentality being like, I'll compete against anybody. Mm. I'm happy to compete, like purple, like purple belts are savage, there's loads of fucking savage purple belts about. I'm happy to compete with anybody any weight, purple belt and above. Yeah, fuck me, I'll compete against a blue belt if they really want me to. But <laughs> you, you get my point, like, it's nice to get to a weight where you can then say, it doesn't matter anymore, because yeah. I'm happy. Like, I'll sit around 100 kilograms, I'll compete against 130, that's fine. I compete against the ninety. Like the, the, these things don't bother me. When you get to that point, that's quite. Especially when you're entering competitions, you almost know your brackets getting merged with somebody. Like especially at, like the black belt level, it's mm-hmm. like you're not get. You'd be lucky as fuck to get a full bracket somewhere. So it's like I'm getting merged with somebody. I might as well be the heavier guy. Yeah, <laughs> Let the lighter guy merge with me. That's interesting. You know I mean? So if you've got guys, for example, who are, I know of a few guys actually, unfortunately, struggle to keep up to the weight of fifty kilograms, for example, but absolute fucking killer. I think there's um. Uh, I want to say his name is Liam. I think it is. It's from like uh, Wrexham, uh, 
club up there, uh, North Wales way. And again, really fucking technical guy. I think he won a grapple wars belt recently. And he just struggles to put on weight all the fucking time. So do you think if you know that's your kind of like your bracket type of thing that you should always try and push up to go higher all the time type of thing? Like, I know obviously the rule sets have changed. We talked about this like under 77 now type of thing with absolutes and stuff. But do you think it's always, you should always try and push on heavier? Um... So you, I think you, it comes you've down got to... the Loch- Lachlan Giles effect, you know what I yes. mean? Like where yeah. you could just still sub people left, right, and centre. So this is where I think because my games never relied on strength, I can go up. Yeah. I think if you rely on strength, you come against somebody who's strong. You you want to be stronger. It's kind of obvious in reality. So you know if you've got a strength based game, being as light as possible is going to make you stronger, which is going to make you better. Whereas because I, like. I've never really like I've always played guard and stuff and I'm I'm happy to just play off the bottom. It doesn't really bother me how strong the guy on top is. It doesn't really make a difference to me. It's very there's you know, a lot of the time a ninety kilogram guy gets tight as fuck on you mm. is gonna suck as bad as a hundred kilogram guy getting tight as fuck on you. It's like it's kinda of the same. So like if you're playing guard, you, the game is to frame, keep them off you while you're setting up whatever you want to set up. Um so for like a game like mine, I don't think weight really matters. Again, if if you if your game is to get on top of somebody, put the fucking the world of pressure on them, squeeze the life out of them. Yeah, you want that to be a lighter guy you're against. You don't want it to be a heavier guy. That's so it probably comes down to game. Yeah, game yeah if you t- I don't know motorsport essences type of thing, if you want to be the fast nimble car that can get on the track as fast as possible, it's great. But in actual yeah. fact, you're just trying to go as fast as you can in a straight fucking line. Then maybe you need a different setup altogether, type of thing. So yeah, it's kind of like making that adjustment. Did you find, I appreciate obviously you said you were a guard player from sort of the beginning, that as you went up that it was a bit of a eye-opener for you with the different styles of game that you're coming up against? So, I don't know, again, I, I haven't watched enough footage of you, mate, so I don't know if you yeah, were like a slap tap and you just pulled guard straight away <laughs> oh, type shit, yeah. thing. Oh, shit, um, <laughs> Or was it the case of like, you, you played around with the wrestling and kind of like realised, oh, fuck, maybe this isn't my forte or... Yeah, so there's a theme going on. Every time I try to wrestle in competition at the minute, I lose. So. Oh, you told me about this in victory, <laughs> yeah. didn't you? Oh, fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're that scramble first, Every man. time, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, go on. I'm, I'm, it's annoying because I do feel like I've got good wrestling, I've got t- good top pressure, I've got good guard passing. Uh, I know I can do damage there. I do seem to flap a bit when I do it. Um, but I'm still on this. If I had to win, I'd pull guard. But then a lot of these super fights, I'm like, I don't have to win. I want to have a fucking crack. And I'm... I'd rather have like a super entertaining match and lose than have mm. a fucking boring stall fest and win. It's it's kind of funny if you if you win or you have an entertaining match and lose, everybody kind of responds to you the same way anyway. The, the, if you have an entertaining match and you lose, everybody fucking great match, mate. What, what if you win? Great match, mate. Is that one it's match, the same fucking shit. It wasn't the last grapple fest; it was the one before, right? And I forget his name, so I really I, I know he's on the next card, but he's under the Instagram of No You Jesus. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you yeah, see his yeah, one? Yeah. Is it Gary yeah, yeah, Patterson? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, yeah. it was. Like, both of them were just going at it, doing Plus. everything, taking off rash guards, getting away the team, yeah. smashing into the barriers. Like, I didn't give a fuck who won. I can't even I mean? remember who won that match. I watched um, it. Ga- Ga- Gary won, I think. Did it? Was, yeah, in the end. Yeah. Nobody it, cares. No. It was a spectacle. I like they the fact he wasn't win. on the next one. I was like, oh, God, I don't want to see him again type thing. Because they were just both doing everything wrestling, leg entries, just flowing the whole place around. And I was like, that's what I want to see. Do you that's know what it. I mean? That's but... exactly it. And that's, that's your job on these shows. It's a bit different if like, Grapple Fest is brilliant because the reality is I'm not fighting fucking, uh, fucking uh, Big Luke for the fucking title. You know what I mean? Or Big Dan. It's, <laughs> oh, fuck Jesus, no. <laughs> well, that Jesus. match is, like is going to happen thing. anytime soon. It's, uh, <laughs> fuck, yeah. No, fuck both of them. <laughs> Luke, like, like, you know, I'm not planning to fight Luke Griffiths for that fucking title. So it's like... Winning's good, but I do want to win. But more importantly, I want to go there and put on a show. And it's the same as lost on the last one. Chris sends me a message. He's like, yeah, I want you on. You always throw down. It doesn't matter. Mm. Like, That's why I'm back on. I could have stalled it out. Well, probably still would have lost. But you know, <laughs> I could have had a boring match. I wouldn't be on this one. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's, it, yeah, it shows. And it's, that is your job. Like, those shows only run because people are paying to spectate. Mm. And if, the, if you're not putting a show on for those people who are paying to spectate, that thing doesn't exist. So fucking go out there and put a show on. I hope, I'm sure you agree with me. I'm hoping with uh, some of the drama that's gone on with your, uh, well, no, not with your previous opponent, but what's gone yeah. on with his new opponent that he's yeah. got coming up, that yeah. it's going to be some fireworks, obviously, for yeah. that match, and it's not going to oh, be. Man. I yeah. can't wait for that match. 
uh, yeah, if if nobody's uh, if you if you don't know what's been going on between <laughs> Shane Curtis and Tom Brasher, man, that shit is the the best shit, man. I fucking I live for that stuff, man. And, and the, it, this is the culprit the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better. Um, it was, yeah, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's funny because I do I, I get along with both. I, I mean, I, I've spent more time with Shane recently. Obviously, Shane's sound as fuck. Yeah, yeah great yeah. bloke. Um, yeah, and he's like more than willing to help me out with stuff. So it's like uh, super happy to have him around. But then I've had more, more than a few uh, interactions with Tom Brasher over the years as well. Man, he's fucking he's sound to me. It, it seems like a lot of people don't have a nice thing to say about him. But I'm like, man, this guy's fucking sound to me. Like, I like this guy. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I, I ain't got a bad word to say about him. Um, and the the two of them clashing, man. I'm just fucking. I'm proper like the guy in the pot, in the corner with popcorn. Go on, lads. I'm fucking loving this. I'm hoping, like I said, it's a good. Like, don't get me wrong. I've got like we haven't obviously the chance to meet Tom and stuff, and we've got yeah. some other guys that we've worked with, we've trained with him, and vice versa with Shane and that type of thing. Yeah. So we're quite neutral in the whole stuff. I'm just hoping, even though there's a little bit of drama behind it, that it doesn't just become like a complete stalemate between the pair of them. And nothing happens. I can't see it being. I can't see. I, I imagine Tom's going to go in there to. Like uh, prove a point. to prove a point, yeah. yeah, which is gonna it means the tempo is gonna be fast off the offset, and it's gonna be a fucking great scrap between them two. Yeah, Can't wait. Yeah. It's a shame because I love Paul to pieces, man. I like Paul does all of our like stuff for the gym. Sorts yeah, my fucking, yeah. Does my rash guard for me? So yeah, and obviously yeah, the prick beat me on the last fucking gravel fest. So like uh, yeah, I got a lot of love for Paul, and uh, as I say, I haven't really got a bad word to say about Tom. Um, it's just the the beef is fucking great. It's it's so much fun. It just it was, uh, there was a time last grapple fest. Me and Jack were uh, we was kind of waiting to warm up. We were just hanging around on the sofas and fucking, oh, is this what you talking about in the backstage? Uh, Shane, yeah, Shane yeah. was over there. Tom walks in and they're fucking shouting at each other across the mat. And me and Jack were literally there going, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> was like, fucking like, uh, on, lads, this is the best thing ever. And yeah. there was um, there was a time where we were in grapple industries. Where was that one? Gra- Grapple Industries, Birmingham. And uh, Shane fought against one of Tom's coaches, I think. Mm. And there was, like, there was a few fucking interactions between them there as well. Was well, this like, before the drama with this whole story? Well, no, this is after. That was uh, that was after the Grapple Fest one as well. Oh, he did yeah. get a noogie that day, So this, this yeah. shit just pops up every now and again. I'm just, I'm just here for it, man. I'm just, <laughs> I ain't taking sides. I'm just here <laughs> to fucking just spectate, fucking... man. This is fucking great. Well, guys, just put on a great performance, please. That's all I have. I don't want it to be yeah, a fuck. Yeah. I just don't want it yeah. to stall out type of thing. Like, and I, know... I can't see it going that way. No. I mean, I'm not sure I've ever seen Paul really stall that much. I know he fucking didn't stop going for me the whole time I was with him. And I just don't see Tom taking a backward step. No, because Tom's last opponent, opponent, I can't remember what his name is. It Philip was... Geyer, yeah. that was Because a... there was a little bit of like, come on, like stop pulling guard, Tom, mm. like get up, stand up type thing. And Philip was just like, do you know what I mean? But again... It was like... annoying because I would love to see them two wrestle. But you'd imagine Philip Geyer would have the upper hand because he's wrestling is so fucking good. Yeah. Um, but then but, nothing against uh, Tom. Like, again, Tom, I see he likes pulling guard from like, yeah. and then again watching sp- the trials and stuff it was a lot of <laughs> I spoke to Tom afterwards and Tom was like yeah like why would I wrestle there's like a pull guard and beat him in jiu jitsu and I was like well yeah, which is a valid I point. mean I'm a guard probably you don't need to fucking sell me on that yeah I'm yeah. with you um, but then the it did Tom was pushing forwards a bit I think Philip Gay was a bit pissed because I think I imagine his whole build it was like he's going to wrestle with me mm. uh, yeah and it, sometimes matches go that way Styles make uh, matches, as they say, type of thing. It's a shame. So. Tom did have a good leg entry. That, uh, he won on the leg entry, didn't he? He, he had did, a real tidy he did. leg entry. He, 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 he caught it. He was doing this to the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like it was fucking close. It was really nice as well. Nah, it'll be good. It'll be good yeah. with that one, which should be cool. Nah, it's fine. Uh, obviously, you're on Grapple Fest next. Obviously, you've got your next opponent yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, looking Paul forward Webb. to it. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, more importantly, to, I suppose I do kind of want to win this time, but again, I'm, I'm not. I'm not fussed, just going to go out there and say, mate, just throw pull, it down. Pull guard. Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to pull guard. As no, soon as I'm going to wrestle. If you pull guard, I'll, screw, I'll be like, yeah, he's won. I'll celebrate as if you've won already, yeah? I'll be there. Like, <laughs> I know the outcome. I'd, I'd love the booze. I'd sit down and be like, boo. <laughs> yeah, How about you just pull guard and just put your ear up straight away, maybe? I'm like, yeah? Oh, yeah, no, there we go. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know what I'll do. Again, I'm not desperate to win. Uh, I'm not saying I will win if I pull guard. Like, I'm not that cocky, but... Um, you know, again, I'm happy to stand and have a have a have a have a war more than more than go and sit guard. I think the more um, talking to you, I think you just want to show off things that you've been working on because it's a lot it, yeah. more fulfilling because you then have like uh, a confidence boost that hey, I am doing the right thing. If that makes, so I imagine yeah. at the level you are, it's not as if there's another 
belt to go for after black belt other than obviously bands and that type of stuff right yeah. in terms of degrees and then on top of it it's then learning new skills and I think with every verse if you're working on something you kind of want to go well does this work can I do this against a, a game yeah. opponent type of thing so this is, obviously I'm going to go out there it's, I'm, not, I'm not even going to try and win I'm going to try and submit him obviously I don't care about winning it's, it's about submitting because if, if it goes the distance I mean none of you really won you both just fucking lost really didn't you it's sub only it's, if it's sub only and neither of you submitted each other you both that, fucking lost I, I, I fucking get so pissed with like sub only events and they go and the match was a draw because yeah. no one got the sub and I'm like no like just give me a definitive answer do you know what I mean no like, I'd rather just say and you both lose <laughs> <laughs> you're both nobody a winner here. I would have thought you would say like imagine Chris just like having the Caesar type of approach. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> that'll be fucking class. No, that's good. Um, sorry, we went on a fucking tangent again with this. Right, wait, that was it. 91, 94, floating around there. So, mm-hmm. anything that you did approach, did, were there any sort of competitions where you were slightly over and you had to make weight for it? And again, yeah. like I say, it's quite cheesy, there's no judgment zone with this in the slightest bit. But any horrific stories, any things you used to try to do to get that weight down? Or it's a uh, um. Yeah, it's always I've always sat like a couple of kilograms heavier where I should be, which is actually ideal, which is where I want to be. So I'm like 102 at the minute, and yep. I'm going to be under 100, well, under 101, there's one kilogram tolerance, so... Oh, that's easy work. Uh, yeah, it is easy work. Um, but, yeah, the, I've never done it strategically, really. I'd always be like, what would really make me laugh is, you'd be like, I want to do intermittent fasting. I'll tell you what I'll do, <laughs> I'll miss breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like well Super is it technical. intermittent fasting or is it just eating a fuckload less yeah. <laughs> this is, the thing is and I think this is where people get confused with nutrition in general and working myself or other people is that from, from my perspective my role as a nutritionist is to understand all the dieting methods right and then try and feel what is going to be most applicable to you and what's going to work the best for you and your lifestyle and it'd be the same if I don't know if you had a fresh white belt come in right and you looked them up and down and saw that I don't know the 120 kilograms type of thing, really unflexible. You're not going to be like, right, you're going to be pulling guard and be, we start doing like, uh, I don't know, rubber guard all the time because like, you're like, it's just not going to work well uh, or they're going to be resistant. And then, as you mentioned, then sometimes you've got to have some people who want every single minute detail because they like that and that's how they respond. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you've got to make it really super simplistic for someone. And as you mentioned, skip breakfast. Cool, I've just saved 400 calories. The job, yeah. Job's good and type thing, yeah. And yeah. it makes it a lot more easier because it can be people's busy lifestyles, they've got things going on. It's like, right, just miss a meal. And I refer it to like levels of laziness is the way I call it, right? Sense of if you're really fucking busy all the time and you've got to drop weight, this is not like, ugh, before I get fucking slated for this, the most nutritionist way to do it type of thing, but try and lose weight, eat less calories, right? How you mm-hmm. go about that, I do not care. Yeah. yeah, right, just miss a meal, fine. All right, if you want to make it a little bit more detailed, maybe don't eat nothing before going to training type of thing, yeah. but make it simple. Don't want breakfast, don't feel hungry, great. Next level could be, all right, fine, go and get the meal preps that you sort of see out there are great, and the, even the microwave meal options in like Tesco's and that type of thing aren't as bad as what they used to be back in the day, right? Yeah. So you've got some like healthier like prep kitchen stuff in Tesco Express nowadays. Go and grab one, yeah? got a bit more time, meal prep the week before. It just, it, it goes in these levels, do you know what I mean? And it's like, you then got to challenge yourself as to what you can and can't do type of stuff. But, yeah. sorry, tangent, you went obviously intermittent fasting was one of them. Anything else you tried at all? Or I've done a few uh, water cuts, and I'm going to use that term loosely, because MMA guys would lose their mind, but like, it, it comes down to the wire, and you're like, right, let's get a kilogram off in the sauna. And then, it, so it's never huge yeah. amounts, but again, I'm never, I'm never competing I'm never way above where I'm competing. It's, yeah. More often than not, it's should have sorted this out a bit sooner. I've got two kilograms left the week before. Okay. It, it, that is, and I can, I mean, I, I eat a lot. I, I know everybody says that, but <laughs> fucking hell, I don't stop eating. And, uh, you know, if, if I cut out a little bit, the, it just drops off me instantly. Yeah. Same as if I eat a bit extra, it just piles on me as well. Yeah. <laughs> it goes both ways. No, that makes sense in terms of that. And I think, I don't I, I wouldn't say the position that you're in is that, that exceptionally bad as well. When we look at sort of, let's say, IBJJF format, way and walk on, right, which is fantastic. You can still manipulate a lot and not be under fueled or under hydrated, right? Oh, so you talked about uh, water cutting, right? Yeah, that's obviously going to dehydrate you. We've also got water loading, which kind of overhydrates you, but makes you urinate more to then weigh less, mm-hmm. which is useful. You could shift another about a kilo doing that. So 
pretty yeah. quite good. Likewise, you can change food groups so that then all of a sudden your muscles aren't full of glycogen, but they you still have energy from fat content, and that again can move stuff, change fiber, all this type of jazz. So mm. there's loads of things in that week for a jujitsu person that you can still do without it being as drastic as like day before MMA weight cut like type of thing. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's trying to get my well my mission statement is trying to get just more knowledge out there because this is a good point. You as an instructor, as a gym owner, you're you're not like the UK UK BJJA like don't give you yeah. courses to go and do on nutrition right yeah. it's kind of you pick up as you go along and just hope for the, well I'll say I like to think hope for the best and just, just work. that's a yeah that's kind of my motto with everything as well it's like if you come here we don't do sit ups and push ups in the fucking class if you need Lies, to go and do strength loads. <laughs> if you need to go off and do fucking a strength workout go you know what I mean that's on you you're here to do jiu jitsu mm. and it's like don't like Anybody asks for any dietary advice, well, they're fucking asking the wrong person for sure, just by the looks of things. But it's like, putting on weight, you see that like you uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, put on weight. At Mackey's twice a day every day. <laughs> You'll get there, trust you, me. You heard it here first. <laughs> the old McGainer, <laughs> <laughs> Mackey's twice a day. Yeah. Um, but it's the same with, there's a lot of this stuff like to do with like mental health and stuff, and it's like, like I'm not like if if you've got mental health issues, I'm not the person to fucking ask. Like mm. go and seek professional advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't just take any old fucking person's advice on that shit. Yeah. Same as your diet, same as your workouts. Just because I'm good at jujitsu, like that is literally all I'm good at. Yeah. There's not a damn other thing I'm good at. Don't ask me for advice anywhere else. <laughs> like for fuck's sake, go and get a professional. It's it's it's, it's strange because unfortunately the people we look up to is in terms of our superiors that we sometimes forget that when we put them into just a normal day to day environment, you're just still Dave. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Right. Well, half of the fuckers on the mat are smarter than you. You know what I mean? They're, they're older than me. They're smarter than me. <laughs> they're in better shape than me. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. If you want technical advice on jujitsu, I'm, I'm I'm there for you. But anything else, like fucking, I'll go and find yeah. somebody good at it. I try and explain this to everyone that sometimes you can be in that sporting world, and I, I like to use the expression quite a lot. Is that if you had an electrical problem, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not calling a plumber. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Hey, they both work yeah. under the same sort of bracket, yeah? You're a jiu-jitsu yeah. black belt and coach and that type of thing, yeah. but it doesn't necessarily mean you're an S&C coach as yeah. well or a nutritionist or dietitian type of thing or exactly. sports injury therapist, physiotherapist or the other one, dermatologist, all of a sudden, do you want to have a look at my fucking rash or my ass crack type thing? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's annoying because, again, from my perspective, the, the, you guys shouldn't have that pressure put on you, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, you get put in that bracket of, like, he's the senior person here, he should know what to do type thing. And yeah. it, it takes some balls for you guys to kind of say that, okay, cool, this isn't my field, right? Go and speak to X, Y, and Z type stuff. Yeah, no, I'm happy to, uh, I own it. Yeah. Uh, don't, fuck, don't fucking ask me. Um, <laughs> I don't want the hassle. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't see why. I, I say to people, look, it's not for me to step on people's toes and that type of stuff. It's just to make yeah. your lives easier. It's that, hey, you, your guys are going to turn up on weight and not have to worry about it and not starve themselves to get there too, you know what I mean? So yeah. that's what it should be. Um, what I was going to say, so intermittent fasting was kind of one of them. Anything else that you tried at all? A bit of water, weight, uh, water cutting? Which no, not a lot. Much, so. It was just, yeah, just a lot of making it up as you go along, which, yeah, um, yeah and then I've had a lot of dodgy performances afterwards as well. Really? So, yeah. You know, starving yourself too much before it and just doing stupid stuff and then you'd be sat there, oh, why was I gassed like two minutes in? Like, because I've eaten nothing today. Like, yeah. Literally nothing. Um, this is, that's the thing with competitions, like, uh, cutting as, a, as I'd say so like if you think of like losing weight real fast at the end is just not the way to do it in, no. in my opinion you're, when you're the fucking expert <laughs> but like every time I've tried to lose a fuckload before that's bad mm. like you know what I mean and you look at it you go well I could have done that six weeks ago <laughs> this is the, don't get me wrong I, oh, like, hindsight's a great thing and the way that I try and sort of position it to a lot of people is that if let's say what we're four weeks away from Grapple Fest now yeah. right um, now your intensity at four weeks out, right, is not going to be anywhere near as high as 10 days out, if you see what I mean, right? I like most people, I like to think in terms of their training intensity, they're going to peak quite close to the event, probably have a few days rest and go in there, don't get me wrong, there's some mm-hmm. exceptions, and just like to roll every fucking day and do whatever, Sean Strickland style, whatever. Um, but I don't want them to give you less energy when your intensity is really fucking high, because yeah. we're basically setting you up for an injury right, or a skin infection, or an illness, or all this type of jazz, yeah. so the idea being is if we can either do it moderately and chip away on the lead up all to it, or if we can get ahead of schedule and give you more food for the intensity, the, honestly, it's the golden area, like the gold era, area, should we say, that I give you more food to bring your intensity up, 
And then if your weight starts coming down because you're going even more intense, it gives you even more food again type of thing. And it becomes a real positive cycle type of yeah. thing because you're fueling well, you're training really hard, your training's getting even harder because you're put, putting even more food in it and it just keeps on going in a positive cycle. Do you know what I mean? But, nice. Yeah, this is where, I, I mean, I, I could do with help myself with all this stuff because it's, again, you don't know. You try and, you have good and bad weeks, I think regardless of your food. Mm. And then sometimes you can be like, oh, I had a good week that week. It's because I had Mackies every day. You know what I mean? Like, that could just be just a coincidence. Yeah. Or, you know, I keep using Mackies as an example. That's right. Um, it's top tier food, you can't go wrong. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it, sometimes it's, it's a, trying to, like, figure it out as you go along. It can just be a minefield because you don't actually know. It's no, like, it's it, about, it, you know, you need a fucking professional to be like, this is what's actually going on. Yeah. I've been quoted before by other clients as kind of like a food PA for them in the sense mm-hmm. that, look, let me understand what's going on, right? Don't get me wrong. If we've got some harsh conversations to be had, and be like, look, Dave, <laughs> three Mackies a day ain't cutting it, mate. <laughs> I know I know Usain Bolt had his chicken nuggets before his 100 <laughs> meter final, but hey, right, we've got a bit, yeah. bit of work to do here. Uh, it's again about trying to help the individual, get them to understand it. So again, this, this is the other thing which I've got a big, bit of a gripe with is that before and after pictures, I'm not to say that we don't put our own before and after pictures up, but the question I ask about a lot of these things is like, what's the after after picture like? Yeah. Right? Are they just a bag of soup afterwards? Back again. Yeah. And I'm like, that's a shit job, right? Yeah. You obviously, getting from a tradesman's perspective, if, you, if I built a wall right, and it collapsed after six weeks, yeah. you'd be calling up saying, what the fuck's gone on with my wall type thing. But yeah. it comes to our own personal differences in terms of our health and well-being. It's like, oh yeah, all blast. And don't be wrong. This focuses on like, here's my reason why I'm going to grapple first, whatever, I've got to make weight for my competition. But I kind of want to think that if I was to part ways with an individual, that they're not just going to forget everything. Yeah. yeah. They have an understanding behind it. It's not like, oh, he just told me to do X, Y, and Z, and that's it type of thing. You, you can think on your own two feet that, I don't know, hey, you go back to Mackey's, it's kind of like, well, actually, when we went to Mackey's, these are kind of the better options to choose from type of thing, right? Yeah. And then at least then it kind of works I mean, a little bit no more. There's no good options at Mackey's. There are, mate, there are. You'll be surprised. Like, it depends if you like them or not. Not when I go. <laughs> we'll find that out Just in a bit. bad choices. Bad choices. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, intermittent of fasting, water cutting, and just doing things last minute, which is, again, I think is the general staple of what most guys do. Obviously, these jiu-jitsu yeah. comps and stuff. Um, interesting enough, obviously your competition uh, schedule is probably more sub only now. Did you do much IBJJF yeah. stuff out of interest? I've never done an IBJJF. Um, Any reason? Or other than price? <laughs> just been price, the it is mainly price. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a nightmare. And it's, I just think over the years they're slowly getting less and less prestigious. Like, oh, by far. It's, uh, yeah, I could tell you anything you want to know about like the ADCC trials. I couldn't tell you one Nogi Worlds. Not a fucking clue. It's not, interesting. Not yeah. It's interesting that. It's, it's a little bit of a shame, especially when they, they you know, they started adding in the heel hooks, this, that, and the other. But, um, which I think was a move in the right direction for him, like to try and get in with the movement. But, um, yeah, it's for me, it's it's so much money to to prove nothing. Like I'm not going to win anything by winning them. Like I'm going to mm. go do. There's a good chance you'll turn up, take a couple of default golds, have two matches. I mean, you can walk away with four golds, it's not going to mean anything. Like, it, you see people winning medals there now, and you're like, it, it I, I know there was two people in your division, it doesn't mean anything. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> default gold, Triggered. default bronze, default silver, yeah. it's all the same sort of thing. Yeah. Um, there's a point then, so obviously we, we've talked about a few times about IBJJF being a bit behind the times, and I think it's to do with red tape, or it's to do with something else, but I'm not sure. Well, what would need to change to entice you Outside of the, the payment structure, if the payments were reduced slightly, right? What what would it be? Obviously, because bear in mind they're, they're a business. They still, and if I'm honest, they they have good quality mats. The venues are pretty yeah. decent. Like the you can watch some of them on Flow, which is a little bit of a gripe of mine. But anyway, um, so and you've got professional referees, and the scoring again can be hit or miss depending on who you get type of thing. But what else is there? Would it be useful for you to kind of go? Actually, this is more prestigious than anything else. Um. Well, I think if they drop the price, more people enter, it becomes worth winning again. I think it's probably as simple as that. Yeah. Like a lot of the time you look at the bracket and you're like, there's a, there's not a lot there for me for the money I've got to fucking spend to go and do it. Mm. Like, it's just not worth it. And then you look at some random bloody Grapple Industries fucking Manchester event, and you're like, wow, there's a sick, there's like four sick divisions for me to go and do there mm. for literally like a quarter of the price, maybe even less. Yeah. So it's like, I'd much rather go there you can you turn up for a day and you'll, you'll get 
like their their no gi absolutes ridiculous. It's it's every belt in it, every belt, absolutely everybody's holding the same thing. The amount of matches you could get in, in one day there, or you know, you can go and have two matches in IBJJF London and one of them be stalled out within the first yeah. thirty seconds. Yeah, for a ridiculous fucking price. Yeah. So it's yeah, I think it is a price issue. It's the number of competitors is the issue. One final sponsor shout out to the team at Inner Chimp. Inner Chimp is a brand name that really speaks to grapplers and fighters, one we can believe and relate to on a personal level. Inner Chimp is simply catchy, right? And with small tweaks can be your general gym wear and casual wear and rash guards like this for men, women, and children. Inner Chimp is ethically produced and has turned down cheaper production overseas to ensure this understanding that we only have one earth right which we need to look after this is at the forefront of their production decisions and we want you our listeners and viewers to have a sense of accomplishment in knowing that you are doing your part when buying their products inner chimp tees are 100 percent organic cotton their packaging 80 percent recycled cardboard and all of their products are designed to last their production and manufacturing is in the uk trying and aiming to be as eco-friendly as possible leaving close to zero global footprint but to put it simply inner chimp has a massive passion for the sport attention to detail and our planet in mind and always at the forefront of your own inner chimp Go check out their website, www.inner-chimp.co.uk or go check out their Instagram at inner underscore chimp. Thank you for your time. If you go and compete, you're making a day of it. You want, you want, to, get, you want to get the rounds in. That's the point yeah. of competition. Is it? It's getting the rounds in. It's not, it's not going to do one match. It, I, love the, I love the sub-only shows, but it is, you know, it is what it is. You go and do your one match mm. and it's, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. At least no. it shouldn't. <laughs> just a bit of travel basically and that's yeah, it yeah a bit so. of travel and a fucking cracking night out afterwards that's, yeah 100% that's normally that's, the rules uh, I still haven't had the chance of enjoying a, uh, a night out after Grapple Fest just yet so. you haven't no it was to be my first oh, one because um, laugh- <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to come find you afterwards oh, and figure out what's shit. going on there or you'll be a, or, or, I don't know you might take me down the wrong path who knows oh but, god yeah uh, <laughs> not even hesitation <laughs> oh god I've got this image of like the hangover waking up like a Tyson tie oh, on the side right. of my face yeah. <laughs> but, oh god um Oh, I think that's basically everything that I've got. My question was obviously on like belts and stuff like that. Unless you've got anything else to add in there out of interest, or no, no. Point. Any other funny stories you got in terms of like you can pick up, pick off of, or fuck? Yeah, I've got some funny stories, but I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say any of them. <laughs> that's fine, mate. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, I'll go through some of the other questions then that we kind of chuck a uh, chuck across. Then so, first one is um, when you go and get your W at Grapple Fest and get that hand raised for pulling guard and doing yeah. a great performance and. I don't know, getting some backside 50-50 heel hook, whatever it could be. Yeah. What is that post-comp meal going to be? Post-comp meal? Ah, oh, sadly, it's always a fucking Mackey's or something shit, isn't it? it well, I've covered that thing. I told you brought Mackey's yeah. out. What's I the order? I don't even want to say that. It depends if you stay over. <laughs> if I stay over, it's probably about five pints and there'll be no meal afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're always having a Mackey's on the way home and it, it is crap. It's, it's, de- it's a little bit depressing to be like... Oh. No, there's no judgment there. I like especially uh, just smashing an I'm avocado and be back at the end of the day. No, but you want something a bit better than a Mackey's, don't you? Um, yeah. What's the order though for Mackey's? What is it? Oh, don't even go there, man. I, I always have. I'd always have like two meals at least, a share box of something, and something else, man. It's it's horrendous. Yeah, it costs me about thirty five quid every time I go. Ah, yeah, it's bad. You eat a lot, though. Yeah, I do eat a lot. Have you done any food challenges or not? Yeah, we did. Have we did a food challenge uh, for the YouTube channel? Um, we went down and did a food challenge. And I was the I was the first person to finish it who wasn't a professional eater, but it was outside of the time, so it didn't count. Oh. But you had to do it in half an hour, and I did it in like thirty five minutes or something. What was it? Uh, oh fuck! It was just a massive breakfast, man. This thing was, was it? huge. Yeah, it was fucking massive. So do you do you follow the channel Beer Meets Food? Uh, no, but I've oh, seen bits. Mate. I literally that's religious. Like I don't know what it is. Something about it that I enjoy watching him do these challenges whilst I'm eating my own food. I don't know why. <laughs> like, and I, like you're in it together. Well, kind of. I don't know what it is. Like, in my head, like, especially if, I, I don't know, if I've got to shift a few kilos and stuff, it may not be as, like, I don't know, as, um, as, as tasty as what he's eating type yeah. of thing. I'll be like, ah, oh, nice, nice little meal. And I'll be like, watching him like, smashing like, I don't know, steak and chips or something like this. And I'll be like, this will do. It will be fine. No, that would upset me. That would. I get uh, jealous. You get jealous. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. The Mackey's order seems yeah. quite it's, complicated. It's all about, uh, it's breakfast for me. It'd be the breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, breakfast is my favourite meal. Yeah. If the missus is like, what do you want for dinner tonight? I'm like, breakfast for dinner. Like, There's nothing like, wrong with that. All day breakfast is an all day breakfast. Oh, See, like, my favourite meal is always like, 
like a, a mixed grill. Man, I fucking love a good mixed grill. You got a bit of everything on there. You can that that's heaven for me. Same with like a like a fry up. Man, fry ups are brilliant. Man, you got to like you got so much different shit to enjoy. That's my shit. Yeah. Like rather than just having one thing, I was like, yeah, I want everything. I want fucking ten different types of meat. You're greedy plate. by some of the things. <laughs> just being greedy. I want everything. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want a lot. <laughs> it's like my Mackey's order. So I went to one and I was like, well, I have everything in meal. <laughs> See, I thought my Mackey's order was bad. It's normally I go with the five piece chicken select as yeah. a meal, right? Yeah. And then I get a nut, like it used to be a ninety nine p cheeseburger, like one pound twenty nine type thing. So I yeah. won the burger normally a McFlurry and then I don't I'm not too well I got pissed off with the milkshake because it's hit and miss there a fucking yeah. working type thing and then just a Coke Zero on top of it but that's the oh, or no, if yeah. I really like <laughs> this is bad if my sugars are going over my type 1 type of thing then I normally get like uh, apple pie to then dip into uh, the ice right. cream is another good combo right. yeah, yeah. Nice. so maybe some inspo for yourself there I don't know <laughs> uh, yeah. um, so uh, blah, 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 blah. we talked about obviously post comp meal what's an unpopular jiu jitsu opinion that you have Ooh, good one um, oh, fucking probably every opinion <laughs> I don't, fucking don't seem to agree with anybody these days um, you know I've always thought see a lot of beginners starting in the gi and I think everybody should start no gi I don't think you should do gi for, for ages Really? Yeah, yeah. The the fundamentals of jiu jitsu are no gi. Like, it, there's too many options in the gi. People lose their mind. And it's similar, as I was telling you earlier, like, uh, I don't spy on the gi much these days. Although I, I love it, don't get me wrong, but I, I just try to focus on my no gi. But Wednesday night, um, there wasn't many people for me to do no gi with, so I was like, fuck it, I'll chuck the gi on, come do some rounds. And my brother, my brother doesn't do no gi, just as gi. Uh, tall, lanky guy, you know, uh, like, good with his grips like he was set, he, you know good at playing guard in the gi and uh, he was playing all these different grips and stuff and I stood there I was like fuck I forgot how much I fucking hate gi and then <laughs> literally I just started flying forward underhook cross face fly forward just smashing um, and just passed his guard every time with it and he looked a bit dejected and I was like it's the fucking basics man just fucking underhook great. and cross face I'll just fly through your guard you can have all the technical grips you want I'm just going to smash you through. <laughs> and it's stuff like that makes you realise sometimes it's like if, it, if it's you can make do sometimes. You can control somebody with a grip or something. In Nogi, you have to be positioned right. You have to have the right grips. Otherwise, you just can't hold somebody. You will not hold them. Mm. And I, I like that. And I think the the whole basis of controlling somebody and all the rest of it, the underhooks, the cross faces, the overhooks, like learning all that shit is super important. I think if you did that and then add the grips on top, you'd be better off than learning to control somebody with all these grips and then going Nogi and being like, oh, fucking all that. that's all fucking useless. No, like you can do no gi in the gi but you can't do gi in no gi mm. you know what I mean so like learn no gi first it's interesting we've got a couple of clubs in the US which are probably more don't get me wrong they're not anti no gi in the slightest bit but more gi focused yeah. if that makes sense and probably a little bit more traditionalist in the sense that they've got some no gi classes on but predominantly it's all gi type of thing but it's interesting to hear your perception I, was like, I probably fall more in your camp in the sense that the majority of no gi stuff is going to work in gi do you know what yes, I mean exactly. and then it's a benefit of like oh I've got more to fucking grab onto all of a sudden type of yeah. thing it's like alright you haven't got the underhook properly when you're trying to pass the guard but at least you've got a lapel to grab onto yeah, yeah? and then you can try and work for the underhook type of thing yeah just... a lot of the time in the gi when you're teaching it as well if somebody understands underhooks cross face and stuff you're like you can grab this and it'll work like that yeah. Whereas, like, it's it's very hard to teach somebody the other, the other way, way around. around. Yeah. It can go both ways, I suppose. But yeah, I, was, I just think yeah, the, the no gi isn't that isn't isn't technical at all. It's very basic. But like doing the basics to a high standard, that's where it gets technical. Mm. But yeah, so why not learn the basics first before learning the technical shit? Makes sense. Does that mean you're potentially going to retire the gi at some point? Do you think, or already have? I don't um, know. Yeah, so we've got plans. I think in the new year, I'm going to stop coaching in the gi. Uh, I'm going to pass it off and do or like just commit fully to teaching no gi because it's hard to keep your head. Competing and teaching is a fucking nightmare. I've got to be honest because like you want to focus on your own shit, but then I know I've got to be like the way I do stuff is like I research a lot of stuff and then I like especially like a particular area and I'll teach that area for like six to eight weeks. So it'll be a particular guard, particular style of passing, like mm. attacks from here or there. Um, and I'll do I do loads of research and stuff and like I'm looking into watching people sparring um, I'll put a little game plan together and then I'll try and smash everybody with it for a while and then I'll teach it so it's easy if you've been using it for like again if, I'm, if I've been using it for eight weeks before I teach it 
it's it's very easy. I, I've had to overcome everything that you're going to ask me in a way. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's like it's very easy to teach it then. Uh, not only that, it's fucking great when you start to teach something. And everybody goes, "That's what you've been doing to me." I'm like, "Yeah, it fucking works, doesn't it?" <laughs> like, it's fucking great. Like, there's no question about whether this works or not. It's like, "Yeah, I've been fucking smashing you with it for weeks," and they're like, "Oh, it's nice to finally learn it." <laughs> so it's like it's the perfect way uh, of, of teaching stuff. But so to keep that going, on top of obviously, it's good because I'm constantly learning new bits, new areas. It's more often, because I have to teach the whole thing, like mm. not just what I'm good at. Um, but then when it comes to competition, you want to be like, okay, fuck all that shit. I need to just sharpen up my fucking best tools. You sharpen yeah. up all your best shit. You fuck off all the new stuff. It's like, if it's not your best shit, just, just get rid of it for a while. That, as you mentioned, kind of the hard balance is that you still got to have your coach's head on in the room yeah. other than you sort of picking your training partners. Type yeah, of thing, doing so. both at the same time can be a nightmare. And then, um, I mean, I've got enough knowledge to teach the like beginners gi classes all the time, but then you add that on top it's like it's, it's a lot yeah it's a lot to be managing mm. so it's like let's just get rid of that one and I'll do this <laughs> and just That's focus on that better so do you other than obviously being invited onto the shows do you try and plan it sporadically so you haven't got too many shows back to back so that doesn't impact the club too much or no so I used to just take everything I could <laughs> <laughs> all times um, you tart <laughs> that was, yeah that was literally just, just grab them like you got one for me yeah I'll have that and I'll just fucking take them all <laughs> Um, but then I've got bulging discs in my lower back, Oof. which is on a day to day not too bad. Like when I'm warm and I'm moving, I'm pretty good. But they flare up, especially after competition, especially uh, after that last grapple fest match. I was fucking hell. Uh, the Monday after that grapple fest match, I tried to, I already knew it was bad. I already knew it was pretty fucking bad. And I tried to get out of bed to get downstairs. I was like, fucking in the toilet. I was like, getting out of bed. Uh, got stuck on the bedroom floor, just like couldn't get back up, just completely <laughs> fucked. Yeah, I was like, uh, I had to crawl around, get my phone. I was ringing the missus. I was like, will you come home at lunch? Because uh, just take me downstairs for a shit. I'm kind of stranded <laughs> right now. <laughs> she was like, I was like, yeah, uh, if, if, if you don't, I'm going to shit myself. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you either come home at lunch and help me down the stairs, or I will shit myself. <laughs> so she did come home. Fucking bless her, my missus is uh, quite understanding with this shit now. She's uh, been around it for a long time. <laughs> so yeah, and like I, I, I could barely, I was stuck in bed for about a week, I think. I could, I could barely walk. And then over the space of two weeks, I, I, it calms down again then, and I can start coming back into training. That's like one 10 minute match could wipe me out for two weeks. So it was after you fought Paul, was it? Yeah. 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 Uh, Paul, happened. you horrible bastard. I'll let yeah. you do that to what a fucking fuck. prick. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Um, maybe teach you to try and wrestle next time not to, not to wrestle yeah, with him yeah. next time I was like, poor gosh I'm not really um, so that was that it's oh fucking hell the uh, well missus it happens last week I think it was last week uh, it was asleep it must have been 2 3 o'clock in the morning and uh, I could hear one of the dogs starting to heave I was like oh, motherfucker's going to be sick <laughs> <laughs> so I've woken up flicked the lights on sat up in the bed my knees gone poof like I pop my fucking knee right I'm fucking flying back in the bed I'm rolling around the bed screaming she's woke up she's like what the fuck's going on the fucking dog's being sick she's like what's wrong with you I've like, taught me else here she's like yeah fucking standard living with Dave that is fucking oh, God. I've gone from literally being asleep to torn ACL in about three seconds <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's Dave's life <laughs> I'd love to be a fly on the wall of that just to see how it all <laughs> fucking goes. <laughs> just, you just need her to like wake up and like push out the bed and be all down. Yeah, she fucking sorted his sick out. We're back to sleep. I'm like, Fuck me then. <laughs> Don't worry about me. <laughs> oh god, mate, that's hilarious. I love it. Yeah. Um, cool. Right. Well, what I'll do is I'll finish off because uh, I am conscious that we actually have the UFC on. So I'll ask you that question. Oh, sure. Have you got Islam versus Volk? Have you got any predictions on that? Man, I think Islam's going to do it, but I'm desperate for Volk to do it. And yeah. I'd say the same, Chamaya versus Usman. I'd love Usman to win, but I think Chamaya's going to do it. Oh, did you hear about the, is Usman, the, is the knee pop with Usman is what I'm now concerned about. Did you hear about problem. that? Uh, no. So he did open workouts and his knee popped and he, you can hear him mouthing. I was like, oh, my knee's gone. Or something like this to Justin Gage. Uh, and I'm like, this is really annoying because obviously I want to see Usman wrestle against Hamzat, who obviously mm. has a good pedigree on like wrestling, but it's not collegiate level Usman and now he's going to have this knee problem which yeah. don't get me wrong I appreciate like as you mentioned with like injuries and stuff the adrenaline kicks in you just get the fuck on with it type yeah. of thing but I don't want that to be an excuse and yeah. 
on top of it, I don't want him to become Tyron Woodley 2.0, be at the top of the fucking hill, and then just be shat on all the way until he gets kicked out again, because it's, it's somewhat it's, happened. <laughs> that's why I'm desperate for him to win. And I, he was like one of my favourite fighters to watch for ages, just how much better he got. He was yeah. the best and still got so much better every fight. Yeah. It was incredible to watch. Really and then, fucking obviously, good. fucking big up Leon, fucking smashing him. That's cool yep. shit. Having our fucking boy beat him. Um, this is good. But then, uh, yeah, I don't want him to drop off. But it's a it's a weird one taking it at late notice like this. That match that could be his last match. Yeah, you know what I mean. And to risk that on ten days notice, credit to him. But I'm like, fuck, that's a, that's a tall order. That is. I wonder how much the money's been going around, especially with Abu Dhabi as well. Because that's the other thing is that they're they're, they're keeping that entertainment factor for all the fans over there. So I don't think they've been a back back to is it Yaz Island for quite some time. Yeah. Over the years. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the Volk situation. I, I don't know. I, my heart wants Volk to win. I'm not saying his lamb's not great at what he does, but I think that one of the key factors that could help Volk massively, and I don't know if people mis, mis, uh, like misreading it, is the fact that when you look at the last fight between those two, it was after the third round that Volk like, had a light bulb moment and said, this guy's grappling isn't as great as everyone fucking says it is. Yeah. Like, not saying he's done got the technical abilities, but everyone used to speak of him as like, me rolling with fucking Lawrence, the Sandman type thing. Yeah. I, I can't fucking like get away from him. Yeah. He was fine with it. And then it was too late by then for him to start doing stuff. So I don't know if he's going to walk in like, I fucking can handle you now type thing. Yeah. Or is that going to be a detriment that he's going to be... I wonder if he'll go the same way and Islam will fancy himself striking a bit as well. Yeah, he might have had a wake up and thought, actually, I didn't do very bad in striking, so maybe I can. Exactly, and we had yeah. that with like Connor versus Khabib, where Khabib obviously threw that actually yeah. wild overhand right, which came from a million miles away, and Connor was like, "What the fuck is this?" And obviously got dropped all of a sudden. Yeah. So you just don't know. But looking forward to it. I think the only downside is just a 10, day, ten days notice thing. Like kudos to Volk, but it's just like you yeah. know it, it's going to be. If it doesn't go Volk's way, it will be brought up. I had it on 10 days notice though, didn't I? Do you know what I mean? It's not yeah, a full Yeah, it'd be camp. right if he won the first one or something, but that's... Uh, obviously, if he wins this, the trilogy's on, which yeah. is going to be amazing. Which is fucking It's just epic. risking it on 10 days. It's credit to him. It's, it's, it's big balls, that is. Big I'm just balls. like, have you seen the, what, the fucking South Park one of him like, carrying his balls around in the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> With the wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> love that's Volk walking in. I think the other one I seen the other day was um, it was like a Royal Rumble edit, and it's like Islam's there, and like in the middle of the screen, it's just like I think Craig Jones posted it, and it's yeah. John Cena going through a Volk's yeah, face, yeah. and I was just like, it's fucking class. But I have been interested on the weight cut with that as well for Volk and how much they've done it with Geordie and the fight dietitian. So he works with Leon actually, um, but yeah, again, it was just really interesting seeing how they went about that, and it seemed like it was pretty flawless for Volk he didn't seem like he was struggling at all type of thing so all interesting sorry that's my yeah. nerdy, nerdy food side of things for you yeah, but, um, right we'll get on to the final three staple questions so we have two staple questions which we ask everyone right and we've also got a mystery question which is from our previous guest and you'll get to ask another one for the following guests alright yeah, so okay. do you want your mystery question first or do you no, want I'll have that last you'll have that last <laughs> alright cool first question we've got for you which is staple uh, which failure do you cherish the most now, it doesn't have to be jiu-jitsu related. It could be anything. Hmm. Failure. No, uh, it's going to be a loss, isn't it? It's going to be a loss, I would say. <clears throat> you know, there was one at Blue Belt, actually. Right. I competed at Blue Belt. I have no idea who the guy was. Although I can picture him in my head. I don't know what his name was. I wonder if he might not even still be about. He just fucking smashed me and left. But um, <laughs> this, guy, this guy, I think I got subbed in about 30 seconds. And he must have took me down, passed my guard, took, went to mount and like head and arm choked me. And just like obliterated me. Clinical. I remember feeling like I'd been like in a washing machine for like 10 hours in 30 seconds. <laughs> I remember coming off the mats and being like, I just got fucked. Like, like literally there's no other way I can describe what just happened to me that guy just fucked me um, fuck it was ages ago it was, it was when I came back after after having a lot of time off on blue for, uh, when I was a blue belt it was when I came back and I remember from that day on I, I trained seven days a week for, for years afterwards oh so it spurred yeah. you on yeah, yeah yeah that was the one I remember being like well, that ain't fucking happening again that was like fucking bad Nice. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely fucking smashed me. No, you need these moments, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that was one of the best ones. I was like, well, I better get better at this if I'm going to compete. <laughs> I can't, can't keep just getting <laughs> fucked. 
cynical masterpiece. Yeah. You just don't think just it's fucking, fucking turning up and being somebody's cum rag. It's like, fuck, <laughs> yeah, fuck <laughs> it. I can't fucking have this. <laughs> oh, we're probably going to clickbait that. I'm not going to lie. That's just fucking <laughs> class. That's the best comment so far. Um, next uh, staple question we've got. Once it's all said and done, mate, how do you want to be remembered? Oh, fuck. Not as a miserable miserable cunt, but I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to go. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Um, I don't know. Just somebody that's going for it, I suppose. Yeah. Like not one of these fucking fannies that was trying to stall out matches to get a little W. Yeah. <laughs> Just fucking send it, yeah. Fucking send it. Yes. <laughs> Something along those lines, yeah. Love it. Love it. Cool. Uh, mystery question then. So I have to emphasise we cannot include Gordon Ryan in this question, right? All right. If you were going to, I don't know, what's it called? Test tube baby, a jiu-jitsu fucking superstar. Yeah. What two athletes would you choose and why? Two athletes. Can't include Gordon. Uh, it would be two athletes. Mm. It's a good one. Hafa Mendes would definitely be in there. He's without a doubt my all-time favourite. Man, that guy. Like fucking poetry in motion, man. Uh, proper artist man just the way he moves fucking love that shit man mm. moves so well half of being there so if you've got like the movement it would have to be fuck you know somebody like uh... you know I've always been a massive fan of uh, Luis Panza um, mainly because he was just a massive guy with this super flexible guard so yeah. obviously being a big guy myself watching him Mate, his guard was sick, and he's never really like achieved that much. I mean, he's always been around the top, but never really been at the top. Yeah. But like his guard was so fucking sick. Um, so yeah, some mix of them too would be fucking great. Nice. Make him, make him 120 kilograms. Yeah. It's fine. I wonder if it would go against my my two, which was Brock Lesnar and Modric Gracie. Oh uh, yeah, we fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked up. Oh, well. People were like, you can't pick Brock Lesnar. I was like, ah, fuck it. He's grappling. It'll do. <laughs> that's, 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 that's another loss. <laughs> Oh, uh, mate, well, look, it's been fucking awesome having you on, mate. And thanks, yeah. obviously, for letting me come down and meet you and have a chat and have a roll with everyone. Um, sure, man. Any shout outs to sponsors, anything like that at all? No, I haven't got any. No? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, shout out to guards, obviously. Big Paul Lukowski, as much as he's a prick for beating me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he, it's good shit for the gym. Um, obviously, you've got like uh, Bullingham Visual Media, who fucking does all of our media shit for the gym, the YouTube channel, and all the rest of that. Nice. Uh, some fucking wicked content on there that he's uh, put together. And uh, probably Max Stevens, who, uh, to be fair, doesn't really. He's got a thing called a, a, a Head Only. He's a, he's a designer, designed all the, the logos, everything for the gym. He's nice. He's uh, fucking shit hot at what he does. Um, so, yeah, shout out to them boys, man. Wicked. Um, any questions for me while I'm here, mate? Was this all going to be off-camera off questions, probably? What are you having for lunch? What am I having for lunch? Oh, fucking hell, that's a good point. I've got to check my blood sugar levels first. That makes a massive difference. Is that going to change it? Uh, well, it depends. Like, I've got to manage it with my type 1 all the time with the joys of uh, having a disease. What am I going to have uh, for lunch? That sounds a shame. That does. Uh, I'll be honest, I think I'm going to get a text message from the wife on the way back because she mm. knows the plans for when I get back is just sit in front of the TV and watch the UFC because it's on at a reasonable time today. Yep. Should I go make a dash back for? Um, I imagine it's going to be a Domino's, I think. Yeah, or oh, Pizza Hut delivery. Huh? Shout out to Pizza Hut. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Pizza Hut <laughs> sponsorships just <laughs> coming for the gym. Oh, uh, mate. Look out for the Pizza Boiler t shirt coming soon. Oh, yeah, it's fucking. In fact, you know what? I'm going to have a Pizza Hut. That's what I'm going to do. Mate, I love it. What's the, what's the, what's the uh, order going to be? Oh, I don't know, mate. Their, their cheese bite crust is fucking something else, man. Is it? Have you seen it? No. Fuck it. The whole crust is like cheese. Oh, man, shit's good. See, I, everyone tells me I've got to try Papa John's, but I just don't want to risk it in the sense it might be shit because some people are like yeah. really fucking good. Others are like, it's fucking awful type thing. Pizza at delivery, mate. Trust me. Yeah. Mate, yeah. Domino's is good. Pizza is better. Trust me. <laughs> no bias for the sponsorship. Well, <laughs> 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 no, mate, mate. Thank you Sad. very much. Um, yeah, we'll catch you soon. Sad. All happy. Wicked. Anything yeah. you want, Kyle? Or... No, that's fun. Yeah? yeah? Fuck it, leave it all in you. Wicked, dude. Thanks, man. Oh, I need a piss. Yeah, go for it. Oh, fucking what have we done?